Star Report. I'm your host, Star. Welcome to the show. Folks, it is Wednesday evening, and we are talking sports tonight. Yes, sports. I love to talk sports with you folks, all right? Um, the title of tonight's show, Should Athletes Stand for the Playing of the National Anthem? Inspired by uh, the whipping, the whipping uh, that the LSU uh, women's basketball team, NCAA, that they took from Iowa, huh? Beat like old Virginia slaves. Whack out! Whack out! Beat them so bad that Angel Reese is now trying to take the shine by uh, joining the WNBA. I think she had 48 hours to decide, but still had a year left in college. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Phone lines open right now. Um, Florida boy Jay may or may not be tapping in left-handed. But, folks, I would love to get some newer people to just call in and talk sports. You know, I've got a bunch of notes here, and I'm going to throw you some curveballs. <clears throat> Pause. And um, I want you to steer the conversation. I am a man of a certain age, and I, I don't want to necessarily jump out the window with regards to my feelings, how I was raised, yada, yada, yada. It's a different day and time. And this is the objective perspective for those who are new to the platform, okay? So um, that's my main topic, uh, what's going on. And, and the governor, pardon me if I didn't say that, the governor of Louisiana, by way of the Washington Post and other platforms, is very, very upset, demanding change after the LSU whipping, okay? Uh, we'll get into the game. I watched the entire game. I thought it was a really, really intense, good game. Salute to Caitlin, huh? <sighs> I I, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say just yet. I, I want you guys, again, to chime in. I asked you the question, was she the GOAT? You know, I gave you all sorts of ways to chime in to denounce the question. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been watching the entire season, so I don't know. Another question I want to ask you guys uh, right now. Catch this one. Catch this one. And I'm sure other people have put this on the table. Um. If LeBron James wins another ring, will he become the GOAT? No ifs, ands, or buts, okay? All right, also, guys, my showrunner, wow, wow. <laughs> Cassie cooperating with the feds against Diddy, huh? <laughs> you saw this coming. I'm shocked. You know, he gave her the bag, gave, you know, oh, man, why, why can't she just go away, hide? But, you know, I've already gone on record uh, in my last broadcast, in case you did not notice, and I, I, I called Diddy a CI, a confidential informant, and salute to my homie, Big Gene Deal. Gene said the same thing. Now, I didn't talk to Gene about that, but I follow Gene's word. You know, I just, I just pulled that out of, out of the sky because I noticed what I believe to be, with Diddy, rat behavior. He moves like a fucking... Like a fucking rat. <laughs> like a nigga who has or will soon sign a proper agreement, okay? Anyway, um, so that's my show this evening, all right? Phone lines open, as I said right now. Um, and I also want to, uh, oh, I want to ask you guys to just, you know, take a look at what I posted in the community section. Shh, shh. Huh? Radio's not dead. Remember I told you maybe 15... Years ago, if, if not longer, it's on life support, huh? Shh. Don't help them. Don't, don't call in and help them get ratings. No, it's... <laughs> I'll see you in New York next month. Shh, shh, shh. Okay? All right. Um, Florida Boy Jay, if you're out there, let me know what you want to do. And uh, Deeds, how are we coming in? Uh, uh, is the audio okay? The spelling, okay? Uh TJ says, star, blink once. If Diddy hollered at you. Oh, thank you, TJ. You know, TJ, I have been putting my foot on Diddy's neck for the last week and a half, maybe two weeks, if you will. And uh, you guys were so surprised that I was going in on him, balls deep. Pause. Because, you know, I've said over the years, he and I are cool. <laughs> but that ain't got shit to do with shit, okay? Uh, okay. So, um, I, I want to talk sports tonight. What, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh, oh, salute to the people who are watching right now, and they're not going to call in. 
But after the broadcast, they're going to go in the comment section and say, yo, OG, I wish I'd have known you was talking sports. I would have called in. <laughs> Front and ass niggas, okay? Cheers. Um, already, let me just uh, get that out the way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the Louisiana governor is highly upset behind the LSU women's basketball team not coming on to... Let me just say this, not being present with regards to, you know, uh, the, the the game that they lost. Um, based upon my research, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, that's not what they have been doing throughout this season, right? They have not been present during the playing of the national anthem. So it was not unusual for them to not be present when they played Iowa, correct? Yes, no? Is the governor like myself and thousands or, pardon me, millions of others we watch during the, the championship games or the playoffs? We're not there all throughout the season. So our perception of things may be skewed. Either way, that's the goddamn governor, okay? So he can peek in to see what's going on and say, whoa, whoa. You're not there for the national anthem. Now, the um, the coach of the uh, LSU team, she addressed this and she's acting like, oh, well, we, we have a routine. Uh, you know, it, it, it was an oversight, something, something, something. And also the LSU uh, men's football team as well. Uh, they don't come out onto uh, the playing field during the playing of the national anthem. Now, let me say this. I need to say this again. I don't want to jump out the window, but um, I want you to know that I pride myself on progressing in life, you know, moving forward. You've heard me say this over the decades, always forward, never backwards. I got that from Nasia Jones. Always give credit where credit is due. Um, there was a time when I and others, uh, baby boomers like myself, we took pride in standing up for the playing of the national anthem or other things, and the Pledge of the Allegiance in the classroom, remember? It is a sweet land of liberty, of the high sea. But, you know, in today's day and time, at my age, and knowing what I know and what I have, what I have learned, fuck proving myself. Fuck what you think or how you feel about me. I am here by way of lineage. Race is a social construct. I don't subscribe to being black. But I'm a proud man of color. Half of my family is descendants of slaves. Or as you guys say, ADOS or foundational black Americans. That's fine. Fuck trying to prove myself in 2024. So to some degree, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if, if, you know, today's athletes should stand or even acknowledge the national anthem. Stay with me. Let, let me just lay all this out. And fuck a disclaimer. I don't have to say, oh, I'm a proud American. And fuck all that. The, the founding fathers of this nation were, were, were thieves, killers, rapists, treaty breakers, swindlers, Con men let out from the gallows. Huh? They came here, they freaked off, they stole shit, they, they hustled people, you know? They killed off most of the Native Americans by way of, uh, of disease. Not, not, not with guns and all that, disease. All sorts of uh, yellow fever and syphilis and all, you know, you know the story. <sighs> I'm just not sure now if today's athletes should stand. And let me just add this last little tidbit, okay? This last little tidbit. Um, here at a time now when uh, illegals are coming in in droves, right? And they are now taking the homes of Americans by way of squatters rights. How the fuck do illegals get squatters rights? 
I and many others, we've been playing that little the little game. Oh, ooh, they're migrants. No, they're not migrants. Yeah, we play the game because of the algorithm. The, uh, the fucking illegals and undocumented people. If they're not, if they're not being vetted, they could be rapists, killers, people that out of out of the fucking psycho wards and all sorts of shit, right? If they're not being checked, and I do mean checked, don't look at me, a person of again lineage. And demand that I must stand. Let me take a sip. Now that may sound a little complicated or complex. <laughs> but that's how I'm feeling now. So I can't necessarily tell the young people, yeah, yeah, no, you should stand. Uh, no, nah, I don't know. Cheers again. I don't know. Let me say this last little thing. Um, you know, throughout the decades, I can tell you that the air of white arrogance at sporting events, if you, you know, if, if you just, you're a little slow standing up, you know, people in the background, stand up! You know, S sit down! All this telling people of color what to do. I can't tell you how many times I've had to literally look behind me and say, Fuck you and the whore who gave birth to you. Come say to my face. Now, I'm not going to admit to certain things, but there's been times when I actually caught somebody and I had to fucking go up in the stands and say, what's up? Those days are gone. Those days are gone. So again, I'm just not sure. You can chime in if you like. Tell me if you feel athletes of today should stand for the national anthem, okay? Um, Crown, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in, sir. Do you want to call in? Okay, if not, thank you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure where you're going, uh, Crown, but thank you so much, right? And guys, I've got uh, a few sponsors that may or may not be tapping in this evening. Let's get started, all right? Area code 850. Good evening. Are you there? Are you ready to talk sports? 850. Hey, how are you doing today, Star? I'm good, sir. How about yourself? Uh, good evening. I I'm doing lovely. Um, on the sports topic, I like to hit two notes. I like to say that um, the girl that, that broke all them records in, in women's basketball, I think I I'm a little hesitant to say she's going to be Jordan. I feel like, I mean, Jimmer was going to, was supposed to, Jimmer was putting up like 30 and 40 points a game at UConn, and then went to the league, and he barely even... Well, sir, with all due respect, that's not my topic. That's not my topic. And her name is Caitlin Clark. Okay, do you know sports? I'm talking sports, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the topic right there on the screen, if you can see it, it says, should athletes stand for the plank of the national anthem? Let's get on topic, please. Please. Okay, as far as the national anthem, I think so. I think if you're a U.S. citizen, you should stand for, for your country. If not, go to another one. Where is your family from, sir? Your lineage? Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're from Panama City, Florida. I don't know if we can't. I asked my auntie one day um, about slavery, and she said, we ain't come from no slaves. Mm. You sound like a tether, respectfully. You sound like a tether. Mm. Come on. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen them change history in my lifetime. I don't know if they're telling the exact truth from 300 years ago. Come on. I got time tonight. Tell me about your tether auntie respectfully. I mean, you didn't cut no slaves. Come on. Come on. I'm just saying what she told me. She said, and I, I tried to correct me. She's like, no, nah, I don't care what the book said. Right, right. We didn't come from no slaves. Yeah. And I mean, I've heard other groups say that when the, the people came on the boat, that niggas was already here when they got here. That we were the original Indians, if you prescribe to, to those types of beliefs. I, all I can say is, as far as, you know what I'm saying, the history of slavery and all of that, and what happened in the 1700s, where they just making up stories that sound a little, I don't know, I don't, slavery don't even sound believable to me. I don't, well, I don't, sir, he, here's the facts and the reality. Here's the facts, man. Less than 300,000. Africans made it to North America with regards to quote-unquote slavery. 
So you can multiply, do uh, fractions, addition, whatever you want to do in, in, in current times and see if uh, the numbers add up, you know, but there were a lot of uh, melanated people. Yes, already here, sir. But now with regards to the, the topic, I want to bring this back around. Should athletes stand for the plank of the national anthem and, and include the, 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 the Caucasians as well and the Hispanics? Do you think that the migrants will stand for the national anthem? That's the topic. I think, I think they should be first to stand for the national anthem. You, you, if, you, if you migrated here, that means you actually wanted to be here. You weren't born here. You didn't have a choice. You had a choice to come here. You better be the first one to get up and play. Okay. And if you see them inside of a, a arena and uh, you're standing behind them and you got a bunch of illegals, migrants, whatever you want to call them, sitting sitting down, eating fucking nachos as the national anthem is playing, will you say, hey, get up? Will you say that? Uh, that's, not, that's not my place to try to force people to do anything. Yeah. All I, I thought so. But, sir, yeah. sir, sir, I thank you for the call. Thank you so much. Caught him. Oh, we're we going to catch the tethers early. Just be on the lookout for the tethers, huh? <laughs> Not saying you have to see it my way. <laughs> Should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? Colin Kaepernick, you know, I, I think he threw his career away. However, I think Jigger Man, when Jigger Man came in and, and very, <laughs> very smoothly said, you guys remember that? He said, well, I, I think we're past kneeling. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Digger man said that I think we're past nailing. Damn, okay. Um, hey Penelope, I got your donation. Thank you so much. You want to call in? If not, thank you for your 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 support. Gangs of love, keeping my hat on and staying seated during pledge. Okay, okay, okay. Spring area code 917. Good evening. Should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? Nine one seven. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, Star. Come you on. hit the nail on the head. Come on. By saying you here by lineage. Yeah. You don't have to follow what they say. You can make your own decisions. You are here by lineage. They're here to murder, rape, all the things you listed above. What makes them dictate what goes on today? Mind you, you know, I used to feel different because, you know, growing up uh, at, at a time, you know, that I went to school and so on and so forth, we were trying to 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 prove something. But I'm older now. Fuck proving any goddamn thing. Yeah, but that's just me. Don't don't follow my lead. Continue on, please. No, no, you're right. And especially in today's climate, what's going on with the illegals. Yeah. <laughs> what what needs what needs more to be said? You know, this, at this point. We don't have to keep on following these horrible traditions. Yeah. Um, with like JT said, we, we're past this. Did you say JT or Jay Z? No, like Jay Z said, like you just referenced him oh, saying, okay. we're past okay. the kneeling. We're, we're past the standing for the national. I thought you said JT from the City Girls. You meant Jay Z. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Jay Z, Jigger Man. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, but nah, you, you hit it on the head as soon as you said lineage. You can't argue that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, I, I have gotten into uh, damn near all occasions with people at hockey games. You know, just you, you go turned up and you're fucking, you're drinking and somebody's screaming, put your hand on your heart. Fuck you. I mean, you know. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, I hear what you're saying. It's, it's a different era. Those, that's how it was back then. Nobody really is. It's very few people who probably are still verbally, yeah. you know, making comments. And the guy that is is probably 80 years old. And he's getting ignored. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Or you got a bunch of tethers. Ah, oh, you know, yes. This whole woke movement, enough of this. Huh? Uh, it's like it almost allegedly like your last call that I was going to pretend saying ah, we must stand and he's a tether. Then he's not going to say anything. That made no sense. You're not standing on what you said. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, Cassie cooperating with the feds. Any thoughts? What the fuck? 
<laughs> he's going to do whatever. She already got the check. Yeah. He's uh, going to play ball. You know, I, I, I still swear by the old school mentality. It's cheaper to keep her. He should have put a baby up in her or something. I mean, just what was she, what was she with him for a decade or more? God damn. Hey, he got caught slipping, yeah. simping. Yeah, he he should have definitely put a baby in her. Or if he was going to let it go this far, he should have paid her behind closed doors instead of letting this get to the public. Because now he opened Pandora's box and it's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, uh, before you go, did you see the game, LSU versus uh, Iowa? Did you see it? No, nah, I saw a couple of clips on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts about the uh, the outcome and 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 uh, Angel Reese now joining the, the, the WNBA? Doesn't she have a year left and uh, she's going to um, – something to do – I think she's going to lose money. No? Do you know? Do you know sports? No, nah, I, I don't know details with uh, women's sports. Uh I just watch it. I might keep up with it. Just, you know, whole basic conversation. I don't know details. Got you. Thank you for the call, sir. Thank you. Peace, star. Peace. Kim Mulkey. That's the coach of the LSU basketball team. Huh? Oh, she's always styling and profiling. Mm. Troll babies. Who knows sports? Let me see if uh, Florida boy Jay or anybody else is on the line. Uh... Well, what what is that? Wait, uh, let me let me actually uh, text Florida boy Jay. Guys, give me a second to say I'm now live. FBJ, are you out there? I want somebody to steer the sports conversation. I'm now live. She got beat so bad. She's not. She's joining the WNBA. Ain't no mind in the WNBA. Um, Sharon, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in. Yeah, Sharon, I was going to take the week off. You know, we, we put it down so hard last week, just going in on Diddy, right? <laughs> but. Somebody sent me a very, very nice email this morning and said, big nigga, you got you to get back on the mic. You know, it's up right now. Area code 340. Good evening. Are you there? Wednesday. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Hey, good evening, sir. How are you, sir? 1051 from Tappanen. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Um, I was just tapping in to say that I think that with the, with the kneeling for the national anthem, I think that people should, it's, it's everybody's choice, man. At this point, it's, it's, the, it's anybody's choice. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to kneel, kneel. Shouldn't be forced on anyone. This is in the same America, you know what I'm saying, yeah. from maybe two decades or more ago when you, yeah. when you, when you kind of had pride in your heart for the country. Right. It's not the same thing no more. It's not the same thing. There's too many questions. There's too many, um, there's too many craziness coming from the top. It, it, it seems like, Americans aren't the priority is weird. So, you know, if if a if an athlete wants to stand, you know, high five to them. If they want to kneel, high five to them. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. did you watch the game by any chance? Not that you had to. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to talk sports tonight. No, 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 no. Mm. The, yeah, I was just tapping in on the kneeling man. The I, I, Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm sports. It was a really, really good game. I watched it almost one and a half times. Caitlin Clark, she put her Mac down. Um, salute to Paul mm-hmm. Pierce. Uh, I didn't know he was on that trash ass show, Undisputed, with uh, with Dracula, Skip ba- Skip, <laughs> Skip, ba- Skip Bayless. <laughs> Paul Pierce said that Caitlin Clark uh, put the uh, the 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 LSU team on her knee and spanked them. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'm a, I'm gonna check it out and I'm gonna check the replay then. Mm-hmm. Well, hang on before you go, before you go. Um uh if LeBron wins another ring, does he become the GOAT? It's my question, sir. I mean, who, who am I to see? Who am I to see? Oh, sir. I, 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 I was just, Can you entertain the question? Can you entertain the question, please. Yeah, I'm a, I'll stick with Jordan. I'm a 80s baby and mm. I'll stick with Jordan, man. I'll stick with Jordan. Okay, thank you for the call, sir. On some hating, on some hating stuff, you know. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. All right, thanks. 
Kids, I may have to switch it up if Le- if LeBron gets another ring, huh? <laughs> that nigga might become the the goat. Um, Alexandria, I got your donation. Thank you. Okay, that's a good way to look at things, I guess. Well, Alexandria, uh, the topic itself has been inspired by the Louisiana governor demanding changes after the LSU anthem snub. And again, we we can't just assume that um, uh, most people know that the LSU uh, female basketball team has not been present at multiple national anthems, but at such a huge game. One would think you would want to show, you know, your, 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 I don't know, your, your pride by way of your state, your school. The governor is talking about taking away people's, um, oh man, all sorts of things. Scholarships. If you don't stand. Wow. Okay. Uh, let me go to area code uh, 630. Good evening. Should athletes stand for the playing of the national hey. anthem? Hey, Star. Thanks for having me on. How are you, sir? So, no, I, I basically feel like, you know, one of the callers said before, uh, I think he was a Jamaican guy, he was saying, like, it should be each person can decide. But I just feel like the government is so corrupt. You got so much stuff going on in this country right now. It's like, why are you, why are you worried about whether I'm kneeling or standing when you guys are – Helping genocide in, in Israel and oh. Gaza and, and Ukraine and Jesus. you know what I mean? Like you think I you think I care <laughs> about the anthem? You know what I mean? Am I supposed to really stand for this country after what you guys did? You know, Vietnam, Iraq. Why are you worried about me? Might you be an incel, sir? You know, I detect a little. Uh, <laughs> I detect an anarchist. Are you- I detect one. <laughs> you're, you're, you're funny as fuck, man. I love, I love you, brother. Please, please watch your mouth, sir. Yo, watch the profanity, and I'm not your brother. Slow it down. Uh, yes. so, uh, so, all right, whatever, man. So, so let's, let's, no, 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 let's, let's go back. Are you an incel? Keep it, keep it real. Come on, we're having a good discussion. I'm Puerto Rican, Irish, Dutch, and Native American. Does oh. that make me an incel? Uh, it could be. You, you have a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans who try to assimilate to the white ideal. No disrespect. Um, okay. No, I mean, I, Come on. anyway, uh, there's another question you were asking about the, the LeBron James, uh, situation. Is he going to be the GOAT? I kind of wanted to Ooh. throw my topic on that. Get back to the sports. If you're all right with that, please go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up watching Jordan. I was born in 81. Um, to me, Jordan was like a God. I grew up, I idolized him. I, I always wanted to play basketball. I feel like LeBron represents, a different generation of basketball players who kind of controlled their own destiny and um, changed the game from a standpoint of they were no longer going to be dictated to, you know, where they were going to play, what Mm. market they needed to be in. Mm. And um, to me, that's a different level of success. And, And I will say it was guys like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson who kind of paved the way for him, Mm -hmm. maybe even a little bit of Floyd Mayweather. Um, But, at the same time, like, you can't blame this guy for controlling his own destiny and basically, like, charting a new map for all these new players. But so I appreciate that. That's you know, a I, good way to look at it, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, the, the free trade market and capitalism, I mean, you know. And, and again, I, I pride myself on moving forward in life. So I don't have to sit here and talk about, oh, well, you know, the quarterbacks back in the days, they were so great. Well, you had Fran Tarkington, who who... who who couldn't get out of his contract with the guy, the Vikings never won a, su- a Super Bowl. Uh, Archie Manning, uh, father of Eli Manning, you know, uh, uh, he played with the Saints, <laughs> couldn't couldn't get a couldn't get a ring, and and others. Uh, uh, Peyton Manning, pardon me if I didn't mention him as well, but um, that's a good way to look at it, you know. Uh, the free agency market, uh, the newer generation. Um, what about um, so so the national anthem? Do you yourself stand? You know, I feel like I got to be real with you. I just like I'm so like I feel like I'm so like tainted from the last. I'm I'm 43 years old. Okay, I kind of feel like I'm in that in that range of life where I've seen the world change, and I think like 
I was educated to believe that the United States was like this great, wholesome, you know, amazing country. Mm-hmm. And the more and more I've like grown to understand what like the real world history, it's kind of like we're, you know, we're just as guilty as a lot of these other countries. We've been all over the world doing all kinds of stuff we shouldn't have been doing. And at the end of the day, that stuff has kind of come home to roost. And I just, I want to, I want to be proud of America for the things that I instill in my kids. You know what I mean? For being honest, for being hardworking, for, for creating, for being, you know, being a part of changing the world to be a better place. And I feel like we've gotten away from that. And so I, I, you know, honestly, I I feel like I understand the people that are kneeling when it comes to like, you know, whether it's police brutality or, you know, racism or not feeling like they're a part of that because I'm Puerto Rican, Irish, Dutch, and Native American. And part of me doesn't feel like I'm a part of that either. I'm not a part of what I thought I was a part of. Hmm. Well, you, you sound like you have learned as, as time has gone on because, uh, you know, there have been, you know, so many different, uh, uh, d- just different perceptions and, 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 and so much racism throughout America's history. And, and we, can, we can be proud of it, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge a lot of that stuff. Hey, man, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good Bye. Okay, somebody tapping in. Hold on a second via PayPal. Natives been killing each other, killing each other off before the Caucasian came through. Let's not act like that's not real. Stand up for the anthem. Mm, well, fuck out of here. Okay, hold on a second. Let me... uh. Acknowledge that uh, person's uh, donation. Guys, also, um, can I ask you to hit the the like button? Okay, Deeds always wants me to remind you to hit the like button. So this this particular topic and video can get in the recommendations, okay? It's not a trending title. From time to time, we just li- I like to just have conversations that are not trending topics, if you know what I mean, okay? RC from the 315, I got your donation, sir. Uh, white people refer to LSU as ghetto punks, thugs, and inhumane, but got the nerve to want them to stand for the flag. Fuck out of here. Salute, boss hog, okay? Um, yeah, they have been dogged, the LSU basketball team, and you know, I'm not going to take shots at them as I once would. I'm older now, but... It, I have to say this. It's too much goddamn hair. <laughs> you know, Angel Reese and the other girls, I mean, does how 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 much does the hair weigh? That's got to be heavy. <laughs> Talking about the lace fronts, the weaves. White girls wear uh weaves too, but it just it seems excessive. Yes, no? Anybody wanna? Chime in on that. God damn. That that was distracting. Hold on a second, guys. I want to make sure I'm promoting my new sponsors. Uh, hold on. And Florida boy Jason, give him some time. He will be tapping in. I do want to bring in uh, area code four. Four, four, three. Good evening. Should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? Your thoughts, please. Uh, I don't think it's a necessity to stand for the national anthem at all. Um, I don't stand for it when I'm at games, and I don't make my children stand for it. Okay. Why? What, why don't you make them stand if we can just you know go a little deeper? Well, I'm of age where I know what our country does to us okay. and has done to people like myself and my forefathers, so why do I need to stand for an anthem that's not true to people that look like me at all? Okay. Can I assume you are a man of color? Can I marginalize you for a second? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm a brother of color. Okay. Yeah, I am. <laughs> do, you, do you stand uh, for the black national anthem, if you will? I do take my hat off for that, but I don't stand, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Lift every voice and sing. <laughs> you, you know the words? I give a lot of Do you know the words, sir? I know some of the words. Sir, sir. I know some of the words oh, okay. that I'm expecting from okay. coming from a black college. Okay. So, you know, I heard oh. them a lot coming from. <laughs> so, if you went to a HBC, you're supposed to know them, them lyrics. Come on, man. <laughs> I, I'm a high school dropout. <laughs> I know them lyrics, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do know, man. I do know. I, I, I definitely sing along correctly. Till earth and heaven ring. Bind ring. Till earth and harmony. Till the glory. Yeah, I know a little bit of it, man. I can, I can okay. flow with it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, so so did you see the game? Not that you had to. I thought it was a really good game. I have not watched throughout the season, um, but the, the governor is fuming upset a uh, louisiana governor he's demanding changes and taking away scholarships whoa whoa yeah he's out of order now come on now you know he's disrespectful but you know how crackers can be so mm. they try to they try to pull their, their little power they're trying to have yeah. but he has no power in that direction because that young lady is going to the next level and she don't need him to try to push her in any direction so come on now well, you're you're talking, hate out there. you're talking about Angel Reese. She's uh, she's uh, oh, yeah, going yeah, to the yeah. WNBA. Do you know sports? Does w- she, doesn't she have another year left with uh, I believe she. I mean, I do. I do believe she could stay another year, mm-hmm. but I mean, she has opportunities in all different directions. So, you know, things have changed tremendously for the players compared to the coaches. Now, do you do you know college sports, sir? I don't, and I'm I'm being honest. Here. I'm looking for people who know. Well, I know some of college sports. I watch it enough, and I definitely watched the game the other night. Okay. And by being a Baltimorean, that was important to watch the young lady from my town to see what she did. She didn't have one of our best games at all. Be more uh, home, t- home of the twelve yeah. o'clock boys. I know them very well. Yeah, no doubt. Home of them bike boys. You know, riding twelve o'clock right now to the you know yeah. parks. You know, yeah. dirt bikes all day long. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, hang on a second. Um, the NCAA, uh, what is it? NIL. It's called the NIL, right? Where, where, where the yes. name, where image, they get the deal, likeness rule. Yeah. Correct me if I'm Correct. wrong. Wouldn't uh, Angel Reese lose money by joining the WNBA? It sounds to me I, I could be wrong, but like the white girl Once beat again. the white girl beat her so goddamn bad. She's she's hauling ass now. Why does she stick around for another year and get that NIL money? Because, like, again, like I said earlier, she might have better deals on the table for her to go to the next level. So there's no reason to keep on hanging out with the youngins in college. Okay. You know, like yourself, when you're a business person, you think of business, man. Okay. Well, hopefully Ice Cube will offer her $5 million like he did Kate, Kate and Clark. <laughs> Exactly. She hit off if, if the cube man throw some type of funds like that. I mean, and she probably got some other situations out there. Those so, so I was capping. Ice Cube ain't, ain't made her no offer to my nose, but I, but I appreciate the call, man. Thank you. No doubt, man. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Lift every voice and sing. Anyway, um. Guys, on the screen, link tree forward slash learn Creole. Trying to get one of my sponsors to call in. Hang on a sec. Oh, and, and I see I see Bone doing work. Let, let me get uh, Bone doing work on the screen. That's the, uh, the Puerto Rico who, who he's on code. He's on code with the Hispanics. They are dragging the hell out of J-Lo on TikTok, and he didn't want to talk about that, but he wanted, he wanted to kick in the backs. <laughs> I forget who we were talking about. Uh, Bone doing work. Check your email. I just sent you the link, sir. Uh, Corey, how are you? Which Corey is this? Thank you for your donation, Corey. Okay. Uh, hey, Veronica. Thank you for your donation, darling. Southside Jamaica, Queens, 917. Hang on. Let me see if this is uh, Veronica right here. Veronica, is that you? Thank you for your donation, Veronica. No, hold on. Hold on. Let me try it again. Veronica, is that you? 917. Hey, Star. Yeah, it's me. How are you? Hey, Veronica, are you broke, respectfully? What do you mean, broke? Well, listen, we don't usually take people's calls unless they send in a minimum. I'm just asking. If if you're broke, it's okay, but just tell us, say, Star, I'm broke. That's all I had. (laughs) 
your brother. <laughs> that's all I had left in my. That's oh. all I had left in my cash app. Okay, I'm I'm gonna give you a pass tonight because I want to hear from. And some... I sent I sent money before the other okay. day. Well, well, listen, listen. You you can't go sit up in Creflo Dollars Church or or TD Jakes Church and say, well, I, I donated uh last month. But go ahead, darling. Where do you want to start? Come on. It's funny. I don't support those. I don't support those. Um, that type of religion. So I right, wouldn't right. know about that. Well, well, listen. I'm pimping like they are. I'm pimping too. So go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so um, you know, I was just thinking about the Cassie situation. Yeah. And it feels like she's just trying to stick it to him every which way she can. You know, who knows what he was telling her when he was on top, when he was making her do all those things. The 10 years, he might have told her, I'm God. You can't hurt me. You can't do this. You can't do that. Right. So now she's doing, she got the money already. So now she's going to get her last laugh. You know, what is, what's the saying? Um, He who laughs, laughs, laughs best or something like that? Laughs loudest. Loudest. Oh, yeah. Well, on, whatever. Yeah. On. So that's what I feel like she's doing. Like she's really going to try, you know, to have any hand she can in destroying him. I think that's where she's at right now. And she has the support of her husband. Remember, he's the one that pushed her to even speak to the feds, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and turn over the, the tapes or whatever that she had, right? That's correct. That's correct. Correct. Can I ask you a question? Can, can, can I ask you a question now? Might Cassie be doing God's work? And I'm an atheist, but in theory, in theory, is Cassie doing what so many other niggas should have done? You're going to pay me, <laughs> and, and I'm going to destroy you because I know you're the devil. I, I, yeah. I know what these other niggas know, but these other niggas is pussy. They scared of you, nigga. I'm not scared of you. You made me get abortion after abortion after abortion. Nigga, you made me get down on all fours. Uh, Topping random niggas off. Nigga, you beat me. Nigga, you kicked me. Did you see the video with Cassie covered up in the blanket uh, uh, in the corner? Yes, huh? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, come on, stars. Yes, talk that. Okay. Yes. Is Cassie doing God's work? That's, that's what I'm saying. She's doing said. God's work. She's going to help destroy him. Yeah. Ten years she went through that. Ten years. Or more. Yeah, so she's she's doing that, I, and I'm 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 all for it. I'm here for for it all with my popcorn and all that. I'm loving every minute of it. I'm loving the the Fifty Cent and the and and um Diddy's boyfriend mm -hmm. Stevie J go back and forth. I'm loving this whole thing. I'm here for it all. Can I throw some bullshit uh, in the equation, Veronica? <laughs> Veronica, I, I, call me v, I, I, I please. well, please call me v. well, you, you're short on the money, so I'm just gonna call you Veronica. You can talk about that. <laughs> but now, but, but listen, listen, listen. I heard, I don't have any solid proof, but I heard that Diddy took Cassie when she was underage from Ryan Leslie. Took her, took her when she was underage. So we can play that little game, you know, uh, when she was 17 or 18. I heard he took her from Ryan Leslie, slapped fire out that nigga. And that's how that went down. Come on. Well, I believe all that because didn't they say that Mises age was questionable too? Oh. You talking about Kim Cone uh King Combs mama, Misa. I'm talking about I'm talking about Justin's mother. Oh, Justin, but pardon me, pardon me. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about Justin's mother. Wasn't it, you know, it was questionable about her age. There's some question about that. She was yeah. like, what, 16, 17 years yeah, old when she was in the video holding that baby. Yeah. She might have been 12 or 13. I don't know, but go ahead and finish up, girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the national anthem, I feel like, you know, <laughs> as far as the national anthem, I feel like we need to respect the women and men that are really putting their lives on the line that have to take care of their families and they join the military for whatever reason. Mm. You know, let's focus on them. They come back maimed, missing limbs and yeah. things like that. And I feel like, you know, just giving respect to them that they are there um, defending our country abroad and here. I think we should just respect that. And when we have a beef with the government, handle that in the voting booth. You know, you, you vote in who you want and you take out who you, you know, but when it comes down to the national anthem, you are representing the men and women that are out there putting their lives on the line. 
I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to be very, very objective tonight. And I'm not going to give a disclaimer about how much I love this country, proud American. Fuck all that. Um, we, we do show a lot of respect to those in the armed forces, you know, and, and how about we acknowledge them at the beginning of concerts when people are talking about all sorts of fuckery and debauchery, you know, before they sing uh, uh, demonic music. Not at sporting events. It's sports. I'm coming to drink and scream. What the <laughs> fuck does the national anthem have to do with sports? Can finish up. Good, good point. Good point. But maybe we should do it everywhere. Anywhere there's gatherings that people are spending money, whether it's a sporting event, whether now you sound crazy. You, you sound crazy. But listen, Veronica, thank you, baby. And you make sure you get that other All right, get that scroll in here, girl. Okay, I don't want to. I'm gonna come at you sideways. <laughs> thank you, baby. Thank you. Later. Okay, we're gonna call her broke Veronica. You know. I took the call, you know, just I feel like talking. Hang on a second. What's good? What's good? What's good? Puerto Rico. Bodiqua oh. in here. Bodiqua. <laughs> Don't do it. Come closer, man, so we can hear you. What's good? What's good? What's good? Is this close enough? You can hear me? We can hear you. You're on call right. with your people. Yes. <laughs> hey. Hey, I still, she still ain't canceled. I still ain't seen it. I'm telling you, she's good. Oh, you mean J-Lo? The J-Lo uh, dragging? Yeah, that's the New York girls, man. You, you, well, saw well, you, you, you don't want to see it. We've already had the, that discussion. All right, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what, what's cracking, man? Uh, should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? Yes, they should. And the key word in that question is athletes because one one caller called in and he was like yeah me and my son we both sit down that's fine if you you know you in the crowd you know what i'm saying i don't expect you to do this but if you are the athlete and and this is a big part of it too if it's televised like you know what i'm saying and that game is big like other countries be watching our college basketball it's all about optics at that point so when it's televised like that yes you very well should stand for the pledge of allegiance you don't want these other countries looking at us and being like oh man these guys don't even got it together some of these guys are happy for the country the other half isn't happy i don't know it's all about optics in my eyes i'm like we gotta look strong and unified that's why i would say they should stand for the anthem okay i appreciate your support let me just say that first and foremost and i want you as a younger uh, uh content creator or call it to stand on your square don't let me you know throw throw curveballs at you and and try to influence your thought or thinking how old are you i forget 30 30 okay and you por igual tu hablas espanol um yeah pretty good but not all of it mm. <laughs> yeah. so, so so you've been whitewashed you know you don't even speak the native uh language well i'm from Spanish. the burbs what's that I rep the burbs. I rep the burbs out here. I'm okay. a suburban. So, so your Spanglish or New Yorican is not that good. No, uh, no, hell no, hell no. I talk ugly Spanish. Se sale fail. Salute to um, <laughs> salute to your 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 ancestors in the, in the sixties and the seventies, the Puerto Ricans that used to wear swastikas. Do you know about them? No, nah, I never even heard of that. What is that? Hundreds of them in the, in the New York Tri-State. He swear swastikas. All, all that black and brown coalition coalition stuff is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. Old nigga oh, start dropping knowledge. Okay, so okay, so you say they should stand for the national anthem. If you don't want to be here, get out of here, right? Um, I mean that's up to the owners, but yeah, if I was owner. You know what I'm saying? I would get together with all the owners and be like, "Nah, we gotta have our players standing for the anthem." And this is beyond the this is beyond the sport and beyond you know the whole entertainment aspect. I'm looking at it from a timing of where we are as a country aspect. Like right now, you know anything could pop off. I feel like right now we're looking weak. We got so many military aged males coming over the border. So right now is a time we gotta show that we strong. And I, I think it depends on the timing. If everything's good and it's all peaceful in America, which is a rare time, if you want to sit your asses down. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Right now, we need to stand. We need to stand for the flag right now. Whoa, whoa. Did you say peaceful in America? There has never been <laughs> right. a period where there was peace. <laughs> I, I feel like stuff is hot. 
You're right. I, I feel like stuff is getting real hot right now, though. So I feel like right now, especially, we got to stand. <laughs> well, what, what, whenever there's the slightest feeling of peace, we, we create drama and wars, and, and we we poke our noses in other people's fucking business, and we, and we try to uh, instill our uh, uh, authority elsewhere. There's never been peace. Anyway, um, okay, okay. Any thoughts on Cassie now? Uh, or maybe she has always been working with the feds and and trying to get my guy Diddy out of here. Bone um, you see, I'm uh, right now. I'm in like a torn spot of like, I'm not sure if he's gonna be cooked, and I'm not sure if they're just gonna like somehow he's gonna get away with all of this. Part of me is starting to feel like he might get away with all this now. But if I had to guess with Cassie, of course she's gonna um start snitching. That's like an obvious right there. That's super obvious to me. And J Lo too. I remember y'all was talking about J Lo with the whole hang gun on, thing. Hang on, hang no, on. No, no, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> um, again, I I still think he's a confidential informant. He has been doing uh, his work, his devious demonic work for decades, and he's never been touched by the 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 hand of authority, so to speak. And that's why I'm um, accusing him of being a confidential informant. And then uh, Big Gene Deal said that a day after I said it. So, I'm, I mean, I'm just guessing. Um, do you think that Cassie may be, maybe they're interviewing her to see exactly what she knows, and if she knows too much, she might fucking disappear. What do you think about that? That could very well be true. I mean, you might see in the future just random people around Diddy that were around Diddy might disappear in mysterious ways. I don't know, because like when it comes down to this whole blackmailing thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's just so many people connected. It would disrupt the whole country of every if everything came out. Yeah, that's what I would. You know, they go crazy, so they got to take stuff like that out. All right. Hey, listen, man. I appreciate your support. Let's let's stay in touch, man. So maybe we can exchange ideas throughout the, the week. I can get you on the show here. Kind of like how Florida Boy Jay, uh, you know, keeps me up to speed on things. Uh, I like your execution, you know. Um, you're 30 years of age. You're, you're claiming Puerto Rico. While you're from the suburbs. Um, do, do you date Puerto Rican girls or is your, you, you stick with the white girls? Keep it real. Um, Right now, the main thing I'd be on is uh, I'd be with a Puerto Rican girl man, mainly right now. She's not my girlfriend, though. <laughs> but I'm, re I'm really with a Puerto Rican girl all the time. And then I got enough. I, I can't say too much. <laughs> say that again. You say you're with Puerto Rican girls sometimes? Uh, like the majority, like the main, my main chick right now is Puerto Rican. Okay. Yeah. She, she's like a homie lover friend, but not your girl girl. Um, yeah, you know, like, we know, we just like, you know, handle our business together. And, but we, we keep it business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate the call, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Stay up, homie. Salute. Okay. That's my guy right there, Bone doing work. He supports this machine. Guys, on the screen, brand new sponsor, TossedAndSlice.com. This sponsor has been with me over the years. Brand new restaurant with signature salads, spinach Caesar, crispy buffalo chicken, Greek goddess, uh, <laughs> hot honey chicken. You got to go there, tossedandslice.com. If you're in the area, uh, tell them Star sent you. You may get a discount, okay? I'd like to welcome them back to the show. Um, Jamal, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in. Oh, Star, will LeBron sneakers sell like Jordans? Hashtag goat factor. So I have no idea. Please educate me. I'm talking sports tonight. <laughs> I love to talk sports. I want you guys to, to steer the conversation. <laughs> okay, and thank you, uh, Bone, doing work again. See that supporting the, the machine? John Flowers, good to see you, sir. He says those young ladies are clearly niggas with wigs. <clears throat> I didn't say all that, man. I said I'm a little thrown off by by the the long, you know, it, it's too long. It's, it's too long their hair, but you know, they, they they play the hell of a game. 
You know, last year's defending champs, for those who don't know, LSU, okay? Trevor, I got your donation. Star, would you smash LSU coach? Kim uh, Mulkey, you mean, sir? Um, yeah, I'd smash her for, 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 the, um, for the keys, for, for, for the keys to her vehicle, uh, the keys to her house. Yeah, yeah listen, I, you know, <laughs> as I've said before, I, I'm, I'm very hard on Caucasian women, harder than, than, than black women, you know? Yeah, I'd smash her, and, and I'd, I'd smash her pockets, too, you know, but thank you for your donation. Um, CJ Boyd, good to hear from you, sir. Are you tapping in? I think that's Mr. 917. Are you camming up, sir? Let me know. Uh, send me an email. Well, let me write that down. C.J. Boyd is Mr. 917. C.J. Mr. 917. He's got good perspectives on things. Folks, pardon me if I don't remember the names with the donations. Okay? I do appreciate your support, okay? Uh, Hector. Hector says it took for a, ooh, a CT bitch to and his empire. Okay, are you repping Connecticut, sir? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. I mean, Cassie did what a lot of a lot of other niggas just you know didn't have the balls to do. Let's keep it real. Let's bring in. Okay, I think this is Mister Nine One Seven right here. Mister Nine One Seven, is that you, sir? Tapping in on Wednesday. Hey, what's going on? Good evening. Good evening. Good to hear from you, man. You can always cam up if you like as well. But uh, I appreciate the support. Yeah, uh, maybe another day, but um, I think you should definitely stand for the national anthem. Come on. I mean, we can all point out all of the negative things that the country does that are true, but we also got to think that all of the people that are commenting in the comment section and saying the jokes that they say and walking around freely and having these experiences, you're able to do that because of the things that people do for the country and the people that fight for the country. So, um, especially with sports, you should stand. I agree, but what's that got to do with sports? What's that got to do with me paying eighteen dollars for a fucking beer, twenty bucks for some nachos? I'm, I'm, I'm drunk, and and I, I don't, I you know, come on, don't, don't bring me down. I want to come in. I want to act well, like like. It, hang on a second. Let me just get this out. I want to act like a pure idiot, and I, I don't want to be, you know, uh, obligated to stand. What's wrong with that? Okay, I'm going to connect that. Well, sports are, you know, are nationally watched. That's not a thing that, you know, we locally watch on, on TV, like our TV shows and stuff like that. So other countries are seeing that we don't even respect our own country. So you tie it into the migrants. The migrants come here and everybody wants the migrants to fall in line and act right. You don't even act right. You don't respect your own country. Why do I have to come here and respect your country? If you watch Canadian sports, when there's things in turmoil going on, they still stand for the anthem. In Ukraine, when the war was going on, after the shooting, they saluted Putin. They still stood for their country. So people in other countries still represent their country as a whole and respect it. And, you know, even with uh, the LSU thing, they didn't, truthfully, they didn't uh, stand for over several seasons for the anthem. But uh, for a game of that magnitude, especially after losing, as a respect thing, they should have definitely stood up. You know, they should have at least, just to so that you have some sort of class. It's not a black or a white thing. It's the respect thing. It's showing you have some class. You take the L. Stand up. Um, the LSU basketball team, again, I have not watched them this season, but, you know, it's, it's women's sports, you know. Um, do, do, do you think that they displayed uh, obnoxious behavior? I mean, the whole not coming out for the anthem, you know, at, at that type of level of, of competitive sports you know million i think that was like the biggest watched game for women's basketball correct me guys if i'm wrong do you think that they should have you know uh, as you just pointed out at least you know said hey let, let's tonight we're gonna stand together what do you think yes just just for that level of play again they in their defense they hadn't come out in over several seasons for uh standing up for the anthem so i, I get that but for that level of game, especially, you, you know, you got the, the woman, the Caitlin Clark, is that rated one of the top players ever in, in the history of women's college basketball. The GOAT! Oh, um, yeah, exactly. Her NIL is, you know, worth 3.5. She's probably going to go to the WMA, the NBA, and get like the max $250,000 contract. Angel Reese right now, she's project projected to uh, go at seven, maybe to Minnesota, and probably get like 70 to 80. So, I mean, for that magnitude of the game, knowing you're probably going to announce wanting to go to WNBA after that, 
just for your own, you know, uh, lineage, you should have came out and said, hey, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to come out and stand for the anthem just to show that I have class. And, and you know, they failed to do can that. You stop and go back and, for, can you stop and go back for a second? You said Caitlin, no, 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 uh, Angel Reese might go where? For how much? She's projected right now in, in the draft, if she was entering the NBA, WNBA draft, to get picked seventh. Seventh. Because she's a forward. She's projected to get picked seventh and possibly go to Minnesota. That's what the projected draft right now. Okay. And make how much? Make how much? Between 70 and 80 with her place, you know. because 70 and 80,000? 80,000? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, now, educate me. I don't know. Would she be losing money by way of the NIL ruling? Well, well, that I don't know. Okay. So I have to look more into that, but I'm not sure about that. I I'm just, not trying to stump oh, you. Me? I'm not trying to stump you. I don't know. I just someone said that to me earlier. <clears throat> She's gonna lose money. I said, Well, why is she joining the NBA? Is she is she in her feelings? Why doesn't she stick around and play another year at LSU? I mean, to be quite frank, if I were her, I would try to even, you know, go the the, the way Ice Cube is offering to Caitlin um Clark. The five million, which is genius to come play in the big three, because then it's going to show one and one you can play with men, which she should be competitive because these are older, retired NBA guys. She should be competitive with them, not to mention all of the commercials and, you know, uh, and attention she's going to get from doing that. Angel Reese is better off trying to go that route and get the five million, which is more than a 250 max contract you can get in the WNBA. And then with all of the, uh, you know, endorsements you're going to get, you're going to make well over $10 million in your first three years. So, you know, the WNBA right now isn't looking good for a lot of these women if they start going to the big three. It's a much better, bigger platform to watch for them because who really watches the WNBA? Women don't watch the WNBA. Women don't support any of their things. Right. Women King should have been the most watched movie in the history of movies. Women King failed. The WNBA should be the most watched sport. It's not. They don't support their own sport. So going to the big three might actually give them some attention, you know, some notoriety to show them, look, we can play against the guys. Did, did Ice Cube offer Angel Reese five million like he did Caitlin Clark? As far as I know, he did not. But that doesn't mean she can't go over there and try and negotiate some form of deal. <laughs> if I were Ice Cube, I would offer her one point two million. <laughs> Where are we going? Hey, here? look. <laughs> Again, she she's a great player, but she's no no Caitlin Clark. Well, hey, man, I appreciate uh, the input, as always. Thank you for your support. Uh, anything with regards to Cassie now working with the, the feds to, to, I don't know, maybe to not necessarily bring Diddy down or maybe to tell what she knows? Your thoughts? I believe Cassie is doing exactly what she's supposed to do. I blame Diddy for this. He put a ring around her eye when he hit her. He should have put a ring on her finger, and that's why he's going through this. Okay. I appreciate the call, man. Thank Hi. you. Thank you. No problem. Have a good night. I think Cassie should watch her mouth because she she's going to be sitting and t and talking to Diddy's friends, the feds, <laughs> and then they're going to I mean, just uh, entertain me for a second. They're going to go back to him and say, "Hey, so so we spoke with Cassie, and do you remember telling her X Y Z?" And and knowing him, he'll say, "Nah, Playboy, I didn't tell that tell that bitch that." And he said, "Well, this is what she's." claiming you know we've got a situation here sean are, are you doing a little tukey right now the little pink cocaine do you you know we got we got her saying that you did xyz in front of her and she will testify if need be with regards to this troll babies has big gene deal going down this path big gene's word is solid with me Cassie might fuck around and, and tell Diddy's friends too much and they say, hey, let, 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 let's take this, let's take this broad for a trip down to Aruba, you know. And then all of a sudden the plane just falls out of the sky. <laughs> Enid, I got your donation. <laughs> Second. JG, I got your donation. Salute to the seven foot nigga bitch. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. I'm not going to say her name. Who's trying to play a victim now? Mm, yeah.
Jesus Christ. So she's not seven foot. She, she's six something. She's not seven foot, but thank you. Gemstar tapping in star. The top college players take their NIL endorsement deals uh, with them to the pros. On top of earning a WNBA salary, they don't lose money. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gemstar. Florida Boy Jay, you need to call in and, and, and respond to what Gemstar said. Florida Boy Jay said to me, she'll lose money. I don't know. Charlie, I got your donation. Thank you for tapping in. Star, will you be calling the Garcia Haney fight? Yeah. You know, Garcia is just a troll to me now. But yeah, I'm, I'm more than likely, yeah. <laughs> he's doing too much. I think he got exposed and, you know, he's just doing whatever he can now. And I'm not saying he doesn't have skills, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, guys, can you please hit the like button? Deeds wants me to remind you so that this video, which is not a trending title, can get recommended, okay? Also on the screen, www.hudsontubs.com, one of my sponsors, okay? And folks, if you want to be a sponsor, reach out via email and we can get you what's called premium placement on the show here, okay? All right, all right. Um, area code 845, good evening. A few topics on the table, are you there? 845. Hello? Yes, sir. Good evening. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment on the, you know, the national anthem thing. Um, can you take off that Puerto Rican Bluetooth so we can hear you, sir? Come closer. Oh, uh, one second. One second. Give me a second, hold folks. On. Give me a second. That's that fly shit. Okay, hold on. One second. And five, four, three, two. How about now? It's much better, sir. Good evening. How are you? What do you want to start? Um, athletes in the national anthem, should they stand? Yes, sir. I mean, you should, but I can understand why someone would want to stand for it. Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, uh, I, I like America. I believe in America. You know, I'm a black American. Um, so if I was to stand for the national anthem, I stand for my people and what they have accomplished while they were here. Um, you know, we had everything in the kitchen sink thrown at us and we still preserved, you know, so that means something to me. So I would stand for that, me personally. But, um, well, in reality, sir, you know I mean? in reality, and you don't have to follow my lead, you know, uh, you're not standing for your quote unquote people. You're standing for capitalism. You're, st you're standing for, um, you know, uh, what our version of democracy? You're standing for the rape, the raping and the robbing and the slaughtering and the uh, prison industrial complex system. That's what you're standing for. All of those things combined, you know. You're, well, uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah. Well, well that, that's why I was going to go to the other side of that. The reason why some people probably wouldn't stand, I would think, is because they probably feel betrayed by America. You know, we got a lot of weird stuff going on nowadays. Um, like I said, I was born in 88, so that makes me a millennial. So a lot of us were kind of like promised, you know, the good life, you know, the American dream. You go to school, you get out, you go to college, you, you get out, there's a nice job waiting for you. You make money, you buy your house. And, you know, all my friends have bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, some have PhDs, and, you know, they're barely making 80 a year. Yeah. You know, and I live in New York, so, you know, that's really nothing. That's pennies for real. You got roommates sharing a closet in Manhattan that costs like five grand a month. That's crazy. Hmm. You know, uh, migrants come in, they get uh, preferential treatment. Uh, so those are illegals. I'm, I'm not oh. playing that migrant game tonight. Those are undocumented people who, in case you don't know, uh, uh, over 200 of them were recently rioting at the border. I'm not playing that migrant word, uh, word game tonight, but go ahead. All right, illegals, you know, I'm all right, cool. I'm just, you know, picking the yeah. words, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, yeah, you know, they, they're getting preferential treatment. They're getting all this money. They're doing this and that. Um, you know, we're paying all these taxes. Yet our roads are still trash. <laughs> We've got bridges collapsing. And, you know, our schools are uh, terrible. 
So I feel like a lot of people just feel, you know, a little betrayed by it. And they probably don't want to stand because it really don't feel like there's anything to be proud of. It, mm-hmm. it almost feels like the older generation, the boomers, the politicians, and all those people that's up above, it almost feels like they sold us out in a way, you know? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, that that's, that's kind of how I can see it from both ways. Like, like I said, for me personally, you know, I think America is fine. It's just that the people running it are doing it wrong. And just because people are using the tools wrong doesn't mean there's something wrong with the tools. It's the person using them. So I think that's what it is. And if we just, people got more involved with the voting and, you know, pay attention to local elections and things like that, it would reflect. And we probably would actually have a better, you know, landscape of things, in my opinion. Um, you know, certain things, that don't, you know, you're, you're an 80s baby, you said, right? Yeah, eighty-eight. Okay, okay. I mean, listen, man. I, I want you to speak your piece and stand on what you say. Don't 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 let me push you off of your square, so to speak. But you're a millennial. Millennials are fucking disillusioned, respectfully. You know, you 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 think somebody owes you something. Whereas in 1961, when JFK gave his inaugural speech, he said, "Ask not what your country can do for you." but what you can do for your country. That's way before your time. You guys think that somebody owes you a job and <laughs> all sorts of shit, and that's wrong. The, 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 the Bill of Rights is strictly to protect your rights. You got to go get it. You follow me? I can see that perspective. I can understand that. However, you also got... I went off the rails, sir. Pardon me. Um, I went off the rails, but I respect what you're saying. Go ahead, finish up. Go ahead. No, yeah, I get what you're saying, too, and I'm not mad at that perspective, but you also got to look at your times was way easier for you than it is for us. No, sir. Did, no, no, sir. It, it, nothing was easy, I sir. So. We, we, we were I, faced with Vietnam. I and all, it was easier. We were faced with Vietnam and all sorts of shit, sir. Racism. Yeah, nah, but, yeah you got you got your, you got your, I'm not saying it was, you know, utopia. I'm talking about mostly economically speaking. Redlining, welfare. So, no, no, sir. It was, most it was of our... Worse. Yeah, but most of our, most of my friends, parents, and grandparents, and things like that, they weren't educated. They just had high school diplomas. They were able to buy houses. Hell, sometimes they messed up the first house. They was able to get the second house. People like me that have degrees and things like that, and we're educated and all that stuff, we probably will never even sniff getting a house. Um, you guys, you know, uh, you can work at a factory, and you was able to take care of a home of two kids. You have two cars with just one job. Now you need three adults in the household just to keep it above water. You know what I'm saying? So I get why you would say, like, you know, you know what JFK said, yada, yada, yada. But we're kind of getting the rough end, too. Like, let's just be honest. Like, economically speaking. I respect your opinion, sir. Thank you for your call. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Sit tight on the phones, guys. Um, Alex, I got your donation. Thank you so much. We should athletes stand for the playing of the National Anthem. Um, and I'm also looking for a couple of my sponsors who may or may not want to call in. Uh, again, linktree forward slash learn dot creole. Please go there. And, and let me say right now, um, if anybody spends $100, I will give you three weeks promotion. If you spend $100 at linktree forward slash learn dot creole okay that's a hell of a discount I, I like to bring in my new sponsors like that by sending people to their platforms to spend money and then i offset it by giving newer sponsors um you know a huge discount okay um brian i got your donation salute hater respect to the machine thank you uh joe pilot Mm. Star Reese can't compete in big three. Too physical for her game. Oh boy. Okay. You see, that's sort of like somebody who knows sports and they can educate. Uh, I don't know what happened to left handed. He was supposed to call in, but I guess he's busy. Okay. Let me just send him a text and say I'm on the line. Oh, I'm, I'm live. Hold on. Hold on. Peace, peace, peace. I'm live. Dana, are you out there? There was something Dana and I spoke about earlier. I'm drawing a blank. 
Shazam. P- p- peace. Peace, God. <laughs> this is <laughs> Shazam from back in the days. I somewhat sort of remember you, sir. Are you from um uh, what, what part of Brooklyn? I, I don't want to assume. Oh, man. From Prospect Heights. Salute. Salute. You used to sell heroin to one of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm snitching just in case he's on some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to, I used to bring her to you three days a week in, in a little white truck, right? You used to meet us over there by the little uh, grocery store and you used to sell her the heroin. <laughs> Peace, man. Thank you. For <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, let me go to area code. Um, hold on a second, guys. Uh, do, 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 do. 310, good evening. Should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? What say you? Hey, Star. Hey, hey. Hey, Star, thanks. Thank you for taking my call. How are you? Um, yeah, the, uh, I, I, and, you know, I'm not a sports guy, but I, I believe that without a doubt they should stand for the national anthem. And I, was, I wanted to address something that you were asking about and I've heard some of the other callers um, take a stab at answering because it is sort of weird to think, why do they stand at a your phone went out so your, your your phone went out can you repeat that something you said uh with any yeah uh, can you can you hear me now yes go ahead, go ahead. can you hear me go okay sorry about that um <clears throat> uh, as to why we should stand at a sporting event and not other events right. one idea that popped into my mind was that sporting events are broken up into regions and or states mm-hmm. so by definition it is a um, regional slash, you know, versus other regions in the country and to stand and say, yes, you know, this team from Chicago is going to battle this team from some other city. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not a real battle because we're united and we, we stand for something more than just, um, you know, so again, if we were to go to a rock concert, they're not part, they might even be from a foreign country, the, the band going there or whatever might not have any affiliation to America. But at a sporting event, there many of the schools are paid for by tax dollars, and um, the revenue is shared here in America. Good point. And again, yeah. So I wanted to address that. Um, now, again, <clears throat> I'm not a sports guy, but you know, my understanding was basically this started with Colin Kaepernick, who you know I think is a cornball. Um, I think he's delusional myself, and I think you know. And well, the- hang on a second. Stop right there. No, the the protesting of injustice. In America goes way back before Colin Kaepernick, way, way back. I mean, I I can go to 1968, the Olympic Games, but I'm not going to go back that far. But if you want to go to Colin Kaepernick, okay, go ahead. No, that's a good point. And certainly Colin didn't uh, didn't create the idea of disputing uh, the the country or or finding flaws with the country. And that is part of the beauty of the country, uh, ostensibly, is that we have that that amendment, you know, the First Amendment to to uh, say to how we feel and criticize the powers that be. And that's one of the things that we have that a lot of other countries don't have. And so um, I, I agree he didn't in, invent it, but I think why we're still talking about it and not quite as much as we did a few years ago was basically police brutality. And, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's controversial to talk about this, but, you know, um, cops get shot more by black guys then black guys get shot by cops. Uh-oh. And that's just an absolute stone cold fact. Uh-oh. That is just an absolute stone cold fact. And I think the media, because they're Democrats and they want to, they have to get the black vote, they have to get at least like 92% of the black vote to win a national election. And the media is totally their apparatus, the Democratic Party's apparatus. They push and they push and they push this sort of um, flawed understanding of police brutality. Now, do we have bad apples? Of course. Should they be hung from a tree? Of course. But by and large, if you look at the facts, and even after Colin Kaepernick... Uh, so, so, so uh, who, who should be hung from a tree? You lost me there. Who, who should be hung from a, a cop? Tree? If, if, you have a po- if you have a cop who's dirty. Oh, okay. If you have a dirty cop, who, okay. who, yeah. Okay. If you have a cop who, right. you know, they should they should face justice, and, well, uh, and that uh, could uh, mean. Uh, stay with me. Stay with me. I I don't support hanging cops from a tr- from a tree. I, I, you, you're using a a. If they're a murderer. Well, if well, murderer. Uh, okay. Hang on. I'm not here to promote that because I am a cop supporter. But at the same time, hold on a second. I appreciate 
uh, uh, what you're saying here. Um, uh, you said that more black people shoot police. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have. Not, I ha- hey, hang on, hang on. I want to respond. We're having a good conversation. I have not checked those FBI stats, which is where you're more than likely pulling from. Yes. Yeah, the FBI uh, table forty-three. Yes, I believe. Yes, yes. Stop right there. Let, let me just let me throw this at you. If I were to put my knowledge to work here, not that I support, yeah. not that I support any shooting of police officers. I would say, based upon research and historical facts, a lot of those black guys have shot in self-defense or assuming that they were going to be killed, so they said, fuck it, I'm crashing out. Not that that makes it right. Not that that makes it right. But there are also stats that show when police come up to a vehicle, they do not use the same type of force and 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 uh, the authority with Caucasians who are behind the wheel, and they get shot by those Caucasians because they don't approach them the same as they approach blacks. Go ahead. Well, you know, they did a uh, um, one of those simulators for uh, cops that show them how they react. And again, it's a simulator with an, uh, a fake weapon to watch how they react. Well, let's stick to the FBI stats. Never mind the assimilators. Okay. Yada yada yada. That that was cute. But let's stick to, as you said. The well, facts. no, I was I was going to say that I was going to say that black officers are quicker to shoot other black people uh, than so, white. So, 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 so you 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 you're moving the goalposts. You mentioned blacks shooting cops. Let's. So so I, I presented something to you yeah. just to be objective. They they probably assume well these cops are coming to kill me. Fuck it. Pow, 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 pow. Not that it's right, but that could be the reason. Go ahead. Well, yeah, but I, I think what you're saying, you know, it, it, what I'm hearing you say is that they react inappropriately and they get shot for it. Um, is that a tragedy? Is that somebody who's maybe a little nervous? Uh, maybe they don't really like cops. Maybe they don't like white cops. And they see a, a flashlight in their rearview mirror and they panic. Um, that's, Can I respond? Um, yes. Can I respond? Yes, please. It could be an abuse of authority. That happens, yeah. Yeah. Come on. And that, that was my point about, you know, pe- uh, pen- punishing with the death penalty if we find a cop of any color who has irrationally, unprofessionally, morbidly wounded somebody. Um, they deserve some sort of, if we can show that it was, it was callous and that it was sadistic. Um, then they should be, you know, I, I said hung from a tree. That's just a saying I use against people that uh, need to be publicly uh, punished, you know, uh, and I, I love cops, too. You know, I know. that. Sir, sir, can we pull this back into the national anthem? Because you, you're starting to sound like an anarchist and I don't want to go down that path respectfully. You know, just, uh, <laughs> are, are, you, well, well, are you from the school of Emma Goldman? I mean, I, I studied, you know, the anarchy in this country. Are you from that school? Emma Goldman. You know that name? Uh, I don't know the name. I'm vaguely familiar with anarchy. I think it takes a really, a really highly educated, highly civilized, um, unified sort of p- uh, population to actually pull off anarchy. I'm not a fan of it. I think you need police and police. You're an anarchist, sir. You said highly intelligent. Is that what you just said? You said to slip that in. Well, I think for anything, anything like that to work, you're going to need some real unity. And most countries can't do it because it's against human nature. Can yeah. you Google Emma Goldman while we're on, <laughs> while we're on the line? Uh, uh, it's been a while. I'll... Um, yeah. I, I, I'm in my little studio, but I'll go back over to the... Hang on a second, folks. I've, I've, I've got a live wire. Uh, you sounded like an incel. Hang on a second. Uh, Emma Goldman, she was she was uh, put out of the country. And well, one of her followers killed one of the presidents in this country. Uh, okay, I just got it going here, I think. Oh, there she is. There she is. Died in 19, and, uh... 1940. Got it. What do you got there? Emma? Yeah, I, I, it's going to, yeah, okay, I'm seeing a revolutionary and political activist here. Um, kind of a homely looking woman, if you ask me, but um, Lithuanian born anarchist. Yeah, so I don't know anything about her, um, but it uh, looks like she died in Canada. And, um, but, you know. Are you capping, sir? Are you, sir, are you capping? You, you know who that is. Come on. Come on. No, not at all. I'm not an anarchist. I think you're pegging me wrong. Um, <laughs> I was telling you that I, I appreciate the police. You know, so I don't think that sounds like an anarchist. So, sir, sir um, you're, you're talking about cops deserve to be hung from trees. That's that's anarchist it, talk, sir. 
If no, 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 no. If they're sadistic murderers w- oh. killing on the job, wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that they should be penalized? I'm not agreeing with shit that you're talking about. But now listen, listen, let's bring this back to the national anthem. I'm giving you the last word. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I will I will I will say, I will say this, Star. By the way, I'm a big fan. I tried to donate to you just a few minutes ago. I'm uh, new sir, to sir, sir, I have no it fans. Wouldn't, it wouldn't take my I have no fans. And stop that you tried to donate shit. Just finish up, please. Come on. No, I, I swear to you. Um, I'll try to do it when we get off the phone. But I, I think that if the media were to talk to Colin Kaepernick specifically about police brutality and really break down the numbers and the messiness of doing that job, if you look at, I think we have 2 million cops and we've got 340 million Americans, it's hundreds of thousands of interactions that the cops have with the public every day. And at the end of the year, unarmed black men, sometimes are between 12 and 20 deaths. Uh, being shot by cops out of uh, almost uh, 330 million. Sir, sir, send me an email. Stay in touch because you're not focusing on the national anthem. But I've enjoyed the conversation. Stay in touch, man. Let's well, the stay. national, the, the kneeling nah, was nah, about nah, police nah, 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 Don't worry about it. Uh, never mind Colin Kaepernick. Let's have another conversation. Stay in touch, man. Well, I agree we should stand for it. There thank, you go. Have a great one. Thank you, man. Okay, okay. Did, did we get him, troll babies? Oh, he's never heard of Emma Goldman. <laughs> Stop the cap. <laughs> Kids, I grew up in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Went to private schools and public schools in the 70s. I learned about Emma Goldman in the eighth grade. I learned about the 1968 Olympics Black Power to Salute. Scotch Plains, once upon a time, for those who don't know, during their medal ceremony in the Olympic Stadium in Mexico City on October the 16th, 1968, two African-American athletes, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, each raised a black gloved fist. You know this all. Yada Bear, where is Yada Bear? Hold on a second. Oh, we we talking tonight. We talking. We talking, talking, talking. There you are, Yada Bear from Down and In Sports. Good evening, Yada Bear. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Salute, Star. How you doing today? Salute. salute. So let, let, let's take our time. I need you to educate me. Um, I'm I'm kind of off the rails this evening. Never mind that old shit and how I grew up. You know. <laughs> pledging to the flag and so on and so forth. I'm, 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 I feel, I kind of feel different now. If we're going to let these illegals come here and obtain squatters' rights and be given everything without even serving in the goddamn military, mandatory military service like they do in, in, in Israel, I don't know if athletes should stand for the national anthem. Am I wrong, Yada Bear? Uh, no, you are absolutely right. I actually you know, agree with you. And I believe that this song should be retired. You know, we, this is a different age, a different town, you know, a different time now. There's more, there's going to be more illegals here than natural born Americans soon. Facts. So why are we still standing for the national anthem? We have um, migrants who's playing professional sports now, especially in baseball. Look at mm. the the percentage between um, whites, blacks, and Hispanics that play baseball. And why should they have to stand for the national anthem? This is not their country. We're not playing everybody's national anthem during those games. Oh, my and, God. It, 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 that, that's such a great point because at some point, they're, well, we, we want the LGBTQ plus national anthem. And if you don't play that, you're you're – you're, you're hating on us. I mean, it's where are we going? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Exactly. And, you know, with the national anthem always bringing in negativity, why still play that at an event that you want to get away from negativity? You, you go to sporting events to block out what's happening in your reality. Now you're in this bubble, you're in this trance, you enjoy your favorite players. You're, you're, you're in this euphoric state of mind there, and then they play the anthem, and you sit around, and you're looking at people who standing, who sitting, 
And now you having these thoughts in your mind, like, well, why this guy not standing? You know, right. is he anti-America or well, look, look, all these guys over there standing or are they anti, you know, black or, mm-hmm. or anti, you know, migrants, things like that. I mean, if you want to play a song at a you know, beginning of the event, won't you play like, I don't know, America the Beautiful, something like that, you right. know, just yeah. something else. Why does it have to be? that particular song i mean they only start playing the song to promote the song after the war mm. you know so yeah. it has to i think there has to be a change and or just don't play it at all you know before the athletes wasn't even on the field on the court when they would play it and then all of a sudden you know a shift came and now they wanted the athletes out there on the field and on the court um you know, while the song is playing, they want to bring out the big flag and everyone's holding a little piece of the flag. And it's like, just just get over it. Like, we know that we're in America. We know that, you know, this song exists. We don't need to play all the time and right. put it in the face of other people who are in, you know, who play professional, who are play professional sports. Everybody who play in these professional sports are not Americans. So stop playing the anthem. That's how I look at it. Who yeah, cares? Who yeah. cares who sit? Who cares who stands? Listen, most of the time when the national anthem's playing, I'm trying to get a bear or something. Who cares? No, nobody cares really. It 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 has to end. And people who call in and who really care, they don't care. They're not standing in a, in, in a home watching the national anthem with with their hand over their heart, hats off. They're not doing that. Half of them are not doing it at the stadium, so it doesn't matter. Just watch the game. Who cares? Hang, hang on a second, <laughs> Yada yeah, Bear, because you and uh, Left Handed, uh, who I spoke to earlier, um, you guys do down and in sports. You did a show yesterday. Did you touch on the um, the Louisiana governor demanding change after the LSU uh, anthem snub? And and if you know about this, can you give us give us some some backstory uh, based upon my research? And I'm not, I, I I don't know all of the details. Have they always been missing at the anthems? What, what what's going on here? What happened? Well, well, most of the time um, with the LSU women's team, they're generally still in the locker room doing their last preparation. They're not usually out there doing the anthem. I just think it's just a bigger highlight because it was the Elite Eight. It's a marquee matchup. It's the rematch of the national title. You know, you got Caitlin Clark, who's breaking every record. You know, you got LSU, who's, quote, unquote, the villain, you know, between these two teams. And um, I just think, you know, it's the Deep South. Pride was a little embarrassed. But this is something that they haven't really addressed before because she hasn't had the team out there. And I think if he had a problem with it, he should have went to Kim Mulkey straight up and said something to her or to the athletic director instead of you go out, you know, in the public and you, and even more embarrassment. I mean, she's been dealing with, you know, um, articles coming out about her, um, Kim Mulkey. Um, she's been fighting with the Washington Post. Um, you know, Angel Reese has always been criticized through the media so I, I just think this is a bad look for Louisiana because he put a spotlight where a spotlight wasn't needed. Nobody else would have would have talked about this if he didn't. Yes, know. yes, the governor. Hang, yes. hang on a second, uh, Yada Bear. Florida Boy Jay, check your email uh, if you want to uh, cam up. I would, I would love to have you on screen. Um, okay, so um, this is not what they have been doing over the span of, of of kim mulkey's uh of, of, of coaching career yeah. right they, they don't take the floor with regards to the national no. anthem no no that they, they have it and and she's an old school style coach and so she's she was around in that era when it was played the athletes were still in the locker room hmm. so you know i'm, I'm guessing it's not a big deal to her mm-hmm. But now that the governor had highlighted it, now it's now it's in the face. It's just something else to continue to smear her because she's going through her own personal battles. Hang, hang, hang on a second, Yada Bear. N- never mind 
like him, Mulkey. Never mind her. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a shot at young black females? Now, now, I mean, you know, salute to Angel Reese and, and her teammates. Let me just say that in case anybody took it you know, the wrong way of me talking about the, the extensions were too much. Great players, that last year's champions. Do you think that this is that old white, you know, hand of uh, moral authority? Stand up for their national anthem. How dare you? Do you think that there's any undertones of that by way of the governor? I think it's possible. And I'll also say if this was Iowa, what if they was what if they didn't come out? We wouldn't be talking about this. Facts. So so again, when we talk about sports, we always have to go back to race because somehow race and sports go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And especially when we talking about the national anthem. It's like, you know, they must don't uh they, they must, you know, doesn't um support America because they're not standing or they're not out there. Uh, well, look at these black girls again being ignorant, mm -hmm. you know, a disgrace. But if it was, let's say, Caitlin Clark mm -hmm. or the uh, Paige Becker from UConn, you know, one of these white schools who said, you know what, we need to talk about the game plan for a couple more minutes while they're playing an anthem, anthem, let's just go over this. And no one would realize that the team wasn't out there. But since it's LSU, you know, a bunch of – Black girls on the team, you know, a team is, is mainly all black girls. You got about maybe like one white girl on the on the team. So if they're not doing it, then they must hate America. They are disrespectful. Right, right. Angel Reese is a disgrace. She's so ghetto. She's so hood. All that stuff because it just comes full circle. It's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's like she can't win. You know, if she's out there and maybe she's looking down. You know, they may say, oh, well, why is her eyes closed? Oh, I know she doesn't pray. You know, look, look how she looks. It's just, it just something else to throw at If I can jump in, Yada Bear, and thank you for, for everything that you're saying uh, uh, with regards to this um, 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 uh, discussion. You know, I noticed Angel Reese sitting on the bench and having to talk to the coach or whoever and having to cover her mouth so that whoever doesn't read her lips to then take, you know, uh, uh, another conversation. Oh, we read her lips, and this is what she said. Did you notice that? She's talking like this? Yes, yes. Um, yeah. for, for exactly how you say, they, they all say, oh, well, look at her cursing out the coach. Look at her yelling at the coach yeah. while the coach is talking. Look at her using profanity. Oh, my God. She's, a exactly. She's, she's saying a curse word. Oh. When, yeah. when, when so, in reality, hang on a second, hang on a second. Listen, I'm I'm proud of my old fucking age. When in reality, <laughs> the biggest shit talker in the NBA, <laughs> the number one shit talker for those who don't know, was Larry Bird. Right, Yada Bear? That is absolutely correct. He Larry Bird. Larry Bird used to talk crazy to every and anybody. He didn't give a fuck if you were black or from some fucking fuck. He talked crazy to you. <laughs> Larry Bird, <laughs> come on, y'all, come exactly. on, come on. Exactly, he didn't. He didn't care. He would tell you what shot he was about to shoot. Yeah, he called your boy in a minute, but boy, boy, you can't stop yeah. this, boy. Boy, you can't, <laughs> boy, boy, boy. What happened? What happened to you, boy? Boy, I just dropped it. Boy, I just won the game. Fuck happened to you, boy? Come on. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, but unfortunately, that was my nigga, Larry Bird. Is that. <laughs> That's unfortunate. That's something that Angel Ruth can't do. You know, she they look at it as being disrespectful instead of her just being competitive. Right. You know, that's what that's what sports about. You know, bringing out that competitive nature from you and your opponent, and you have two of the biggest competitors playing the other day with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. But God forbid, Angel will say something kind of out of pocket. But Caitlyn's saying it right back. They'll point out Angel's comment and just dismiss Caitlyn's, which is extremely unfair. But that's the world we live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, before you go, can you break down this whole NIL ruling? Uh, Florida Boy Jam, I, I thought he was going to call, and I guess he's busy. Um, he said to me on the phone earlier that 
Angel Reese joining the NBA, she would be losing money. Um, I don't know uh, what her her financial status is or what it could be. Does she have one more year at LSU? And if she's, well, she is going into the draft. Will she graduate? Is she going to not get her college degree? What's going on here? I'm, I'm confused. Well, um, well, what is she? She is going to get her degree. She, she do have one more year left. I believe she had she had got injured when she was in Maryland, so she missed significant time. So the kind of um, she she was able to keep one year eligibility. Okay. So she she definitely um, could come back, but with her transitioning to the WNBA, she wouldn't lose any of those NIL deals. They just I believe will just convert to regular endorsement deals with those companies. Hmm. Okay. So I, I so I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that she's not she wouldn't lose those sponsorships just because she graduated from college. If these are some of these sponsors are are national brands. So mm-hmm. it would just, you know, transfer over to her just having regular endorsements from these companies. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, and, hey- and I did hear people talking about like her and Caitlin Clark possibly playing in the big three, I think that would be a huge mistake. The big three is nothing but a novelty league mm. to me for old guys who still. Well, hang, hang on a second, Yada Bear. Did you hear that someplace else? Or are you talking about the troll babies? Because the troll babies are amping up the set. Just, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the, the troll babies. Oh, and, no, no, no. And, 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 and no, no, no. Yada Bear, do not, do not address them. Let them do what they do. <laughs> those, are, those are homeowners. They have careers, not just jobs. So, the, so they talk in wow. Oh, no, 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 but, they talk wow, reckless yeah, a, <laughs> as they do. Don't address the troll. Yeah, but your last call, your last couple calls, I heard a couple guys, you know, addressing that, and I'm like, damn, I'm like Caitlin Clark playing no, no. in the big three. No, no. I wouldn't want to see that at all. No, no, unless you've heard Ice Cube make an offer for Angel Reese, which I have not. Don't worry about the Oh no, no, no. Well, I know that she, I know he made the offer to to Caitlin Clark for yeah, the, Clark. you know, her you discussed earlier, just saying like, well, he should give Angel Reese like one point two, but I wouldn't want to see neither one of them playing in the big three. Mm. The, the the big three is a novelty league. It's like two steps up from old guys playing in the YMCA. You have mm. former, you got former players Damn. who got who got put out the league. You know the league retired them, or they was injured and they couldn't make it back. Why should she play three on three basketball? Well, hang on a second, y'all, to bear because I pay attention to all the bullshit. Does Lil Dirk have a league? Because he said he's got ten million for. Caitlin Clark. The fuck was he talking about? <laughs> Lil Durk. I saw it on the gram. Lil Durk. Said, uh, I, I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that yet, but that's also ridiculous. It's, okay. it's like okay. it's like you parading her as a novelty act. Oh, look right. at her. She right. can shoot. She right. can play with the guys, too. <laughs> like, no. Get out of here with that. No. Nope. Okay. Right. And nobody watched the big three, okay? These guys play at the YMCA. Nobody's watching that, okay? Thank you, Yada Bear. But, Great to talk yeah. to you. Keep me posted on everything that you and Left Hand to do with uh, Down and In Sports Talk. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Salute, Star. Okay, salute. Okay. Peace. Yada Bear tapping in. Oh, I see the white Denzel. The white Denzel. Hold on a second. White Boy Rory, can you hold on? I'm coming to you next. White Boy Rory. Yeah, yeah. All right, sit tight, sit tight. We're having a good discussion this evening, folks. We're talking sports, one of my favorite topics. I like to be educated. (laughs) Should athletes stand for the playing of the national anthem? Do you know the lyrics of the national anthem? Do you know the history of the national anthem? I love being the age that I am. Not that you have to agree with me. I want you guys to speak freely if you're, you know, of of the newer generation, which most of you are. My analytics say that. I'll give you the last word, okay? Never mind me and the things that I know about, again, the 1968 Black Power protest, you know? I learned that in... uh, was it Shaka Maxson Elementary School or Terrell? Terrell Middle School is when I learned about that. Also, you guys ever heard of Bob Hayes? 
A few of you have Bob Hayes, track and field, huh? 1964 Olympics. Bob Bullet Hayes from Jacksonville, Florida. I spoke about him before, and and someone called in, and and, and uh, they were very grateful that I acknowledged him when I took my Florida road trip. Bob Hayes and others. Jesse Owens. I mean, I can go back. Jesse Owens had Hitler in the Third Reich upset during the Olympics once upon a time, huh? Can I get an amen if you know who Jesse Owens was in that live chat? So, yes, my generation, we we wanted to stand and put our hands over our hearts in, in the classroom, the Pledge of Allegiance, and so on and so forth. But shit is different now. I feel different. I'm, I'm not, I would never say F the flag. I'm not going to say that, but you know. Lorna, I got your donation. Thank you so much. Okay, Lorna says the anthem has anti-black lyrics. Why stand? Okay. Alexandria, she says, Star, is this a black show tonight? You betcha. <laughs> White boy Rory, what's up, man? What's cracking, the white Denzel? What do you got for me, man? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? Oh, you <laughs> you love to see it, man. I saw the game. I saw Caitlin Clark and that whole team of white girls bust those big, nasty soul sisters' ass, oh, man. You text me. That was oh, good oh, to hold see. Hold on, hold on. I was busy, and you, you text me and reminded me of the game. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll tell you, check out this white girl. She busted these big... Big jungle girls' asses, man. <laughs> she was throwing up threes like Steph Curry, mm. you know. Come on. And um, yeah, and, uh, you know, Angel. I, I like Angel Reese. She's cool. She is who she is. She don't hide it, you know. She's um, she's got she's tough. She's sexy, white boy. A chick from she's Baltimore. She's sexy, huh? She's sexy. Break yourself. You you yeah. would, you would smash, huh? You put your face all in the butt cheeks. Definitely fast. Oh, definitely. I come on. Up. I would climb up on top of that all day. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yo, I, I think you're right. I think you're onto something. I think that the that the uh, five pounds of extra weave and eyelash uh, extensions on a bunch of never those, mind all that. Whoa, 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 no, down. Ne never mind all that. Never mind all that. Let's let's get to the national. I think it weighed them down. The I think it anthem. tied them out. Let's get to the national anthem, white boy. I'm on real nigga time tonight. Was cracking. Yeah, I don't. I, you know. Uh, we used to stand for that. It's hard nowadays to to, to uh, care too much about the country. To be honest with you, I'm down with the with the young people calling in on this one. You know, I never thought I'd say it, but yeah, you know, if you don't want to stay, is it? She's getting paid, right? So to play ball. So if it's in the contract, then it's in the contract. If it's not in the contract, man, she, you know, she could turn her head to that. And say, man, I'm later with all of that, you know. But uh, one thing, I remember she said she wasn't going to go see the Biden's when she won last year, Angel, Angel Reese. And um, and then she changed that up real quick, and she was smiling on the camera with them. And she, I thought that was phony of her, you know, so I was never, like, um, really a too big of a fan. Caitlin Clark is way better player than her, more fun to watch, triple doubles. That white girl could play. She's the greatest female player ever. Huh? That white girl mm. is the greatest female player mm. ever. Nobody could deny that. Nobody could deny that. And and she has a whole team of white girls with a badass white girls. They took those those big sisters on. You know, they look like coal miners' daughters. A, the whole team looked like coal miners' daughters. You know, one of them looked like Brock Lesnar's uh, daughter. Brock Lesnar says she's a big old white girl. Corn Jesus. Fed. You know, Iowa, uh, the whole fan base was white. That was kind of crazy to see. That was really a white versus black game. Uh so it made the game even better, and especially since the white girl won, you know. Um, but I don't know, Star. I, I see what you're saying about the about standing for the for the um, national anthem. But you know, they're let, they're throwing veterans out of the out of the um, the veterans homes and giving them to migrants where I live. They're letting the migrants go get uh, free health care in the VA hospitals yeah. and making the veterans wait. Yeah. So I don't like that. You know, this, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't like that. So, so, so before you start kicking up all this dust about standing for the national anthem, 
Are, are you are you gonna tell these goddamn illegals stand up for the national anthem? Well, where's your driver's license? You know, hands behind your back. Uh, the, 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 the 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 plate is uh, uh, expired or something. You know, that's why yeah. I'm at. That's why I'm at. They shouldn't even have a say. They shouldn't even have a say in this topic. The, the uh, foreigners. And the yeah. words of zip with the drip. Let's get to that. Let's get to that. <laughs> right, right. You ran away from your country. You ran away from your people. But you come over here and start waving a flag and get a tattoo of a country you couldn't even survive in. Let's go. And then you're going to come over here and sit down and have an opinion about the our national anthem. They, they are the reason this this whole thing is going down the drain fast because of them bringing their culture mm. and their third world crime over here. Mm. You know. Uh, before they came here, let's say like the 70s and the 80s, and uh, people had pride in the country. But once they opened the floodgates to all these uh, asshole countries and they all started coming in, yeah. that's it. We went down like the fall of Rome, man, you know? And uh, it's hard to be proud of your country. Where I live in New York City, it's hard to be proud. I mean, they had an old lady get her jaw broke, wired shut, and the guy got let out with no bail. Jesus. Now this lady's on TV with her, her jaw wired shut, and she was just walking home from work. Mm-hmm. And this maniac, he got a, a, a rap sheet a mile long, and he walks out of court with no bail. And I'm supposed to love this country. You know, you giving everything to the illegals living in hotels and shit right. uh, in, in Midtown, uh, right next to Grand Central Station. They've given them debit cards with thousands of dollars. So they never did this for nobody else. Right. They never did this for while everybody else is starving. There's all all types of Americans on the street sleeping in the same spot they've been sleeping for ten years, right where I live. And and and, and but these people go front of the line, walking with their new suitcases and brand new clothes into a hotel. Never did nothing for this country. Nobody in their family never did shit for this country. And they get top billing. And we're supposed yeah. to love the country. Yeah. You know? That 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 Louis that governor down in Louisiana, if he wants to feel like that and he wants to be a uh you know, he was like an ex cop and a and a uh and I think he was like assistant DA. So he's a hillbilly. Yeah. You know, he's one of these hillbillies yeah. got his old hillbilly in his house. Yeah. Do what you're told. So roll over, I'm gonna tase you again. Fact, <laughs> right. <laughs> No right, give us something to be proud of. Yeah. You know, are you proud of us? Are you helping us? You know, give us something to give us something to stand up to and mm-hmm. sing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're watching this whole thing go downhill fast. We ain't even fighting. People should be strangling these migrants mm-hmm. off of job sites. Mm-hmm. They should be going easy, easy. Okay, you're going in a different direction. Easy, telling easy, you, man. easy. We're not talking about. They should be going into the whole. Rory, 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 Rory. So slow down. We're not My talking. Brother's going first. You give me a second, folks. He's on one. We're not talking about strength. Imagine giving giving them free health care in a veterans hospital, throwing veteran veterans, old veterans out on the street so that the migrants can move in there. That's crazy as hell. You're supposed to love this country and respect the national anthem. You know, it's played out. It's played out. Even for me, it's played out. My dad was drafted. He was in Nam. You know, they never did nothing for him. They let him go to the VA hospital if he wants to go to. That, that He got his own insurance. The VA hospital sucks. Right, right. You, you, you die in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. People where I live know what I'm talking about. They know the VA hospital in the Bronx. They know the VA hospital down here in Manhattan. They know, you know, they know the care people get. It's not what it's supposed to be. Roy, before you go, Cassie's now cooperating with the feds. You up to speed? Cassie. <laughs> I got to respect the jokes. She got the money, and now she's getting back at them. You got to respect the jokes, man. I think she better be careful because she, you know, she, she more than likely, she's talking to, to Diddy's friends. <laughs> he works with the feds. Listen. If she, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let, let me just throw this. Let me just throw this out there. If she says the wrong thing, she'll disappear. Yeah. If she, she'll be in a. She'll, oh, be in, probably... she'll be in a helicopter that fucking uh, you know goes out to the Pacific somewhere, and are oh, we the the search for Cassie? <laughs> she better be careful. What do you say to that? Yeah. Yeah, I say Diddy's a gangster. I still say Diddy's a gangster. He's three or four steps ahead of. Cassie and everybody else. Yeah. He already got her. He already got her piece of earth, uh, you know, dug up. He's just <laughs> smiling, riding his bicycle with his shirt off. He ain't worried about Cassie, you know. She can try all the games she wants. He got, you know, I, th- I think Diddy got 
Uh, I think he's three or four steps ahead of everybody. And I think he got a couple of, of uh, fresh dugout uh, burial plots already. Okay, easy, easy. You, you're doing too much, white boy. Hey, man. In a far well, Rory, away. Rory, good to talk to you, man. <laughs> we'll catch up. We'll catch up. All right. All right. So. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk to Florida Boy Jay, and then I'm going to take my break. Florida Boy Jay, I'm coming to you right now, sir. Sit tight, sit tight. Uh, Rob Lowe, I got your donation. Rob Lowe says, start getting calls from Emma Goldman's great-great-grandsons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I caught him. <laughs> Pretending he doesn't know who Emma Goldman was. <laughs> I learned about her when I was about 13 or 14. <laughs> Hold on a second. There he is. Big nigga tapping in. Yo, what's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on, homie? Chilling, man. Chilling. Um, <clears throat> I was chilling uh earlier. The Dominican woman, and um, you know, I had to get her out of here because we had the live stream. We had to talk can about. Can you some bring your sports. camera up a little bit so I can get you get 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 the thumbnail? I'll get you in the thumbnail. All there right, you. Is this good? It's all right. Yeah, just you, I need you to come down a little bit. Just there you go. There you go. There, perfect, perfect. So what's cracking, man? What's cracking? What's what's shaking? Chilling, like I said before. Uh, like you know, I just had a, a cool little nightcap with a Dominican that dropped her ass off, came back here in time. Um, <clears throat> ready to talk about the D situation, ready to talk about Angel Reese, how um her teammate got cooked by Caitlin Clark, mm. how Caitlin Clark honestly, like I said, we want to talk about uh the NIL deals. And if the big three actually offer them a contract and if the NIL deals can be um, still had after athletes turn pro. And to be honest, by the bylaws, they don't have any restrictions from athletes maintaining their contracts or deals after they sign the NIL. So say you signed an NIL deal with a car dealership or Kane's Chicken Fingers or Steak and Shake. Okay. And you go pro, you can still keep that NIL contract because as a professional, you can sign endorsements. So I wanted to clear that up also as far as. So now know. hang on a second, because um, earlier when you and I were talking uh, about the NIL ruling and, and the deals, is she going to lose money joining the WNBA? That's what you said to me. When I said, Possibly. when I said she would lose money because. For what Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are bringing to the game right now in this new social media era, the <coughs> WNBA contracts are really obsolete to what they're going to bring to that sport individually. So in a way, outside of the NIL deals, yeah, they're losing money because they're not getting paid with their work. Anytime you hear players saying they're not, they're losing money, just like Caleb Williams, who's going to be the overall number one draft pick, right? He's getting paid more in NIL money than what starting quarterbacks are getting paid for coming into the draft. When you see a Trevor Lawrence okay. or you see a, um, a a Mac Jones or you see quarterbacks coming in before that, when they're getting paid as their base salary as a rookie, because you have to remember when Sam Bradford came in in 2000, I think the 9 or 2010 draft, I want to say the 2010 draft, when Sam Bradford came in, they had a rookie wage scale and a rookie salary cap because before that, rookies, we're getting astronomical deals. So we want to talk about the Caitlin Clarks. We want to talk about the Angel Reese's. We want well, to talk about hang on a sec, because I right. don't know. I'm just going by what right. you said. I want to focus primarily on Angel Reese. She's joining the she, – oh, pardon me. She has made herself eligible, correct me if I'm wrong, for the WNBA draft. You said she had 48 hours to make this decision. Can you break that down? Yeah, it's weird because with the – WNBA and women's sports, they have a shorter window of eligibility or claims or to, to go eligible. Because, you know, in the NBA, you can say, hey, I want to go eligible in March. And by May, you can rescind it. Or the NFL, you can say you want to go eligible in December, January. You can rescind it before they have, like, the pro days, they have the combine. Mm -hmm. But with for some reason, for college basketball, when it comes to women, they only have 48 hours after – they're eligible to go to the draft or not to make a decision. Okay. So what she did, instead of coming back for another year, like I would have liked her to do, she decided to go pro. And like I said, stop before, right there. Stop mm -hmm. right there. 
So why doesn't she go back for another year? Why is she going, quote unquote, pro? There's a, there's a salary cap, you know, um, uh, and, and, and I don't know with regards to whether she's going to get her degree or not. Maybe you can clear that up. Um, why is she, she going pro? Degree. Why? I think, honestly, she has had her run in college sports okay. in her eyes. And we want to talk about the Chris Webbers, the uh, the Jalen Roses, the Vince Youngs, the, the Reggie Bushes, a lot of, of the – even even we talk about Carmelo. Once you make your name for yourself in college sports okay, and your name is at its peak, that's when you have to leave okay. because you don't want to be a Matt Leinard and be like, oh, I could have came out my junior year with number one because, but, because I came out for my senior year okay. and tried to repeat, I fell to 10 and fell to Arizona. Or you don't want to be a uh, – a Mecca Okafor, who Me, or 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 correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe she doesn't want to run the risk of getting injured next year in college, and then not be able to go pro. Does that make sense? It does, because we see a player like Willis McGahey who rushed for 1,700 yards and 27 touchdowns for the O2 Hurricanes and broke his leg. His leg bent backwards in the 2003 Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State, and he got drafted, I think, in the second or third round by the Bills and had to sit out a year before he could actually take the field in the NFL. If he would have never had his leg bent backwards, you were looking at a top 10 pick. You're looking at, at, at a Heisman Trophy finalist with the stats that he had before he bent his leg back. So just like you said, or we can look at a Marshawn Lattimore, a a, a tailback for the uh, uh, South Carolina Gamecocks for two, three years. Number 21, Marshawn Lattimore was just as good as um, uh, a Leonard Fournette and a bunch of running backs. He tore his ACL, broke his leg, he never played a down in the regular season in NFL. So what you're saying shows that you could be um, a player. I've got the guy from Loyola Mountain who passed on uh, Hank Gathers. You can have a heart attack on the court and never suit up. And your family doesn't get paid. You don't get played. We got Maurice Claret. We got Mike Williams. Players who tried to go in their freshman and sophomore years who got denied by NCAA NFL regulations in uh, the Supreme Court and ended up not going pro when they thought they were qualified to, and then ended up not paying out in college and not paying out in the pros. And that's why we have NIL. That's why players can go pro. And she understands her hype is going to be as big as it is. We have Juju coming in from USC. Caitlin Clark's doing her thing. We've got a girl from UConn. She knows it's time for her to ascend to the next level. Her hype right, is not well, Okay, well, hang on a sec. Hang on a second, because I'm, I'm taking your word for this. Um, I have not paid attention to the season prior to uh, the, 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 the the games that we're seeing now. I just want to be clear on that. Uh, with respect to the national anthem, do you think that athletes should stand? That's the main topic tonight. Uh, whether they be college, professional, do you think that they should stand for the national anthem? Absolutely not. Um, as we've seen before, we've had the black national anthem play right before or after the American national anthem because as a black American – we already know that they excerpt the third verse, which has racist lyrics to it. We understand that the national anthem was never meant, just like the um, Declaration of Independence, it, it was never meant for black Americans in the first place. So if we choose not to stand for it, if anybody else who lives in America chooses not to stand for it, between what they're doing with the immigrants, between what they're doing with sending money, between the genocide they committed, between the atrocities they committed on their own land against their own people, if we don't feel like standing up, people go to war and fight for the right for us not to stand for the national anthem. We have people like Kaepernick who sacrificed. We got people like uh, Madhul uh, uh, Shahid who sacrificed for the Nuggets back in the 90s, the shooting guard. People sacrificed for us not to stand for the um, Marshawn Lynch, wasn't he protesting before Colin Kaepernick? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, he wasn't protesting. He just decided not to speak during the Super Bowl when they went in 2014. Okay. But so he wasn't, he wasn't kneeling sitting out just on, on some real nigga shit. He was just. I'll, I could have hey, swore, hey, hey, swore he was sitting no. on his helmet saying, fuck the national anthem. He, he said, said, I'm just here so I don't get fined. If he wasn't standing for the national anthem, the NFL didn't make a big deal out of that because. <laughs> he was sitting down. He wasn't causing friction. But once right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, but I'm how many times honest. did he do that? He probably never stood for national anthem, but because he didn't play no, 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 no. 
No, no. How oh. many times did he sit on his helmet and say, I'm just here so I don't get fined? That's a protest. Uh, specifically during Super Bowl media week where all the players are available to the media at nauseum, he picked that week to rebel against the media, knowing in 2013 he didn't <laughs> really have a problem with it. Okay. But when he came back the next year. He didn't year, do that in multiple games. I'm Again, I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to be educated. No, Marshawn Lynch, as you can see, has always been a media darling somewhat. But when the Super Bowl came for that particular year against the Patriots, he was like, I'm only here so I don't get fined. I'm not gotcha. talking to anybody. Okay. Okay. We got Diddy information, though? Well, I mean, it's just, you know, there's reports that Cassie is uh, supposedly, allegedly cooperating with the feds. I'm, I'm saying she better be careful. I'm standing on what I said, that uh, Diddy is a confidential informant. He's, that, that's all rat behavior, what he's been doing. And, and I think she better be real careful, you know, sitting down there right. thinking, you know, shit is gravy, talking to his business partners. <laughs> oh, to his partners. In my opinion. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, they're going to use her as a mule to get as much information, like you said, until she starts talking too much. Then maybe, you know, they might, you know, rewire the car or, you know. That's what uh, I said sure. earlier. Yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Don't yeah. follow my lead now. If you no, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sometimes they can lead you to the water. Because they know you know too much. Yeah. They want to make it comfortable and act like we are on your side. Tell us everything you know so they can gauge how to move with her. Because maybe she knows yeah. too much, but we have to make you comfortable enough to tell us too much. Because if we don't, you can play us with a long handle spoon and we might get set up. She's so got to be real you know. careful. She'll, she'll be at uh, Chick-fil-A getting a... Uh... One of those spi spicy, spicy chicken spicy sandwiches. Spicy deluxe number two. Spicy, spicy chicken sandwich and and and, and drink. Uh, what, what do they got there? The fancy fucking lemonade. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Shit or, like or that. The, or the lemon and, and then she'll yeah. wind up like she'll wind up like I'll be sure in a coma. I I I'm guessing I don't know. But anyway, um, all right, all right. What's popping on your channel, man? What's cracking on a Florida boy J on yeah, YouTube? Man, we, uh, we still been dropping clips daily. We've been dropped five clips yesterday. We dropped seven clips today. We're gonna drop another eight clips tomorrow. Okay. We're just dropping clips, segments, shorts of our uh, of previous episodes. Jay Doug is getting over his sinuses because I'm just getting over my sinuses because, you know, I was sounding raspy the last couple weeks. I don't know what it is with the pollen, but he's getting back healthy this week. So I know Friday we're about to go back live, we're about to go back to the Wait pod. a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute, big yeah. nigga. Yeah. You said you and who what? No, no. I was saying because it's pollen season and I had my sinuses has been affected the last couple weeks. That's why I've been sounding raspy. And my producer, reason why I haven't did an episode Friday or Monday, because he has been having pollen and sinus allergy issues, too. Stop right there. Him. Stop. you to talking about J. Doug? J. Doug, yes, sir. You and J. Doug were traveling in Vegas, L.A., yes? No, no, he wasn't with me. I was, I was by myself. Okay. Yeah, but it's just right now. Stop if right you, there. Stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> stop. Hey, this stop is, with the bullshit, man. Stop What's right up, there, man? This is April. You're having sinus something with the pollen. Yeah, yeah. Florida boy Jay, I've been there, my nigga. I've been there. Do you need help? Come you're, on, man. I'll call you. You're not gonna say you fell asleep with the fan on, are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. Listen, man. Yo, yo I'm yo, I'm now nah, I'm sniffling because I fell asleep with the fan on. Where we going, my listen. nigga? You was in LA, you was in Vegas partying. I saw you popping bottles with the bitches. Now you're all of a sudden you got pollen in the sinus. Where we going, my listen, nigga? Listen, man, I've been with the Dominicans. I've been Dominican women. I've been traveling. <laughs> My producer's <laughs> under the weather. I'm under the weather. Okay. I've been real shoddy on the phone calls. Work with me, star. I'll be back fine. By the I'm not accusing you. I'm just asking you, are you okay? You know. If I needed help, you know I'll reach out. Okay. All right. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes. Good to see you, man. Salute. <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to holler at you, dog. Stop okay, fucking man. with me, man. All right. <laughs> 609, good evening. We're continuing. Oh, yeah? Good evening. Oh, good evening. Oh, oh. You got to turn that down in the background. I got to get you out of here. What are you doing? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sheesh. Because I was, uh, I was just, hold on, just one second. Yeah. 
doing too much. Yeah. Come on, Makisha, fix that. You got to go. You can't be killing the vibe. Can you hear me? Are you ready? Good evening. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, good evening. It's cracking. Can you hear? Okay, Trent, New Jersey. Okay, how are you, baby? How are you? I'm, I'm just fine. I was listening, and uh, should uh, players be made to sing the national anthem? I was thinking, I said, you know, I had to sing the, uh, to say the Pledge of Allegiance. My mother was a teacher. Um, of course, you know, if you are able to read, then you, you know, as a, as a kid, I read a lot of different things. I, I would say it. Sometimes I wouldn't say it, but, uh, you know, this is, like you said, this is a new time, and um, a lot of people coming here from uh, Mexico, which is in North America. People are coming from Venezuela, South America. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Yeah. Um, sometimes I, I get frustrated. My grandfather was in, uh, drafted at, as a young man to World War II. I served my country. I get frustrated sometimes, but I, I you, you know. You said you were in the armed for, forces yourself? You were? Yes, yes, I was. I was in the um, Army Reserve. Thank you for your service, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't do shit. <laughs> well, 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 well no, 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 you were there, babe. No, no, you were there, baby. I mean, I signed up for selective service when it was everybody else had to, you know what I'm saying? But uh, thank you. Don't, mm -hmm. don't say you didn't do shit. You, the little of what you did allowed for people like me to live the lives that we live. Thank you. Now, go ahead. Yeah, Come I, on. I, I signed up um, when I graduated high school in 99. And, uh, signed up. And okay. It was a scary moment. And I, I was I wasn't thinking like that, you know, when you're young and I'm trying to think about the people who are doing things while they're young. I've got two children. I've got a 19 year old daughter um, who works two jobs and I've got a 17 year old daughter who's coming out of high school. God and bless your family. God, bl God bless your family. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I say that with all due respect. Go ahead. My mother is an 81 year old, uh, very vibrant um, woman. She was a teacher who, saw, uh, who taught for 40 years in Trenton uh, public schools. Damn. Yeah, with a master's degree. One of the only black women, who, not one of the only black women, but it was a thing, you know, to have your master's degree. A lot of white ladies didn't have them. It was a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, she came from Florida. I heard you speaking about Florida, and Florida Florida is it. Florida Florida was is an it place. A lot, of, a lot of soldiers come out of Florida. A lot of people who are uh, fighters and strivers mm -hmm. come out of Florida. People we watch on TV every day are Floridians. Right. And a lot of heat, a lot of people with uh, good spines come out of Florida. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I I watched, my, my mother told me one time that McGreevy, uh, he, she was in, uh, she was over here at the um, Board of Education. He gave a, she was, she was at, a, um, you know, a teacher's meeting and he was there and he said that uh, every, uh, fourth grade young man that does not it, it, fourth grade is a tar target grade she taught fourth grade for those young black boys who don't pass that fourth grade state exam they build a prison in the uh, state of New Jersey yeah. so uh, you know and, and these are things that a lot of people aren't privy to and then you see all these uh, the, the influx of these people coming in um, you, you know and uh, the, the anthem is the is the last thing that should uh, be a concern. Should yes, I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to say the last thing they should be concerned because it's a lack of of uh, what you say. Uh, Take your time. Uh, Take having your time. discipline. Take your time. Discipline. You, you know. When you go to school, you do what you're if I can jump in for a second and put some respect on your mother's name, she taught in what years? Uh, you said 40. How many years? 40? She taught for 40 years. Trenton, New Jersey, for those who don't know, has always been a hellhole. So she was down there in the trenches teaching the babies. That's the, that's the trenches. Trenton. Um, yeah, yeah. Trenton, Trenton, is a, Trenton is a working town. Trenton is a town. It's a hell, baby, it's a hellhole. Um, that's that's down there with Camden, C CMD, cash money, uh, well, cash money drugs. It's a hellhole, pres baby. President Taft, President Taft, 
his tub was made in the city of Trenton. He was, it was, uh, this was a town where you get your porcelain from. I know. My grandfather was a special police officer in the mm. city of Trenton. It's a, it's a working town. It turned into a piece of shit after crack. Camden got so bad uh, back in 2010, if I can just go off the roads for a second. They actually got rid of all the police forces and they said, if you have a 911, uh, d don't call us. I mean, if, if, if it's a shooting, call us, but don't call us for fights and domestic bullshit, right? Camden. Right, right, right. Well, Come on. you know, then they, um, well, this is, you know, this is coming into them after that with what with the whole raid with the uh the riot with the with the with the black gentleman back you know back in the day they and this is what caused gun laws in New Jersey and New York to be so tight in the first place. Because niggas got wild. Um so you know a lot of things that are current today and the and the rules and the laws that are so tight in New Jersey today mm -hmm. is because of the um tight restrictions that they put on um, specifically black American people, which you can, which a lot of people take for granted, um, not only some of the most positive things that um, have taken place in, in um, American society, but some of the laws that are implemented to, as far as gun laws, but they ain't gonna never let them gun laws go too far, <laughs> you know, as far as, you know, when you were speaking about the national anthem, um, I, I, you know, I, I can't remember the words of that, uh, national anthem. I know it has some um, race of connotative uh, mm -hmm. words to it, but you know, you won't. You, we we were taught to say it at my age. That was one nineteen eighty. You were taught to say it to do what you were. So we were taught to uh, you know, do what you were supposed to do. Practice makes perfect. So you gonna yeah. do what you well, well, the pledge of uh, pledge of allegiance is what we used to say every day in school. Remember, remember that I pledge allegiance Absolutely. to my flag and the and the republic. Uh, it's United States, the public which it stands, uh, uh, one nation under God, indivisible. I mean, there's different mm -hmm. variations of it, but that was every day, you know, for years and years and every, years. Every day. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and as that, as when, and, you know, I think about that pledge sometimes, and I said uh, a pledge of, of allegiance to the flag, to, which is, to the republic. Now, I, and, yeah. you know, a republic of people and I and you know I, I love America. My mom was a teacher, you know, teacher kids are the worst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the American government, but I get frustrated because I'm like all of this cum drum and stuff. I, I listen to I listen to you all the time, uh Star. I think, uh, back Thank in the you. day Thank when you've you been the evil star. And I and I appreciate the evil star. And Thank I you. and I listen to the uh will you say this lady who you I, I still am evil baby. I just I, I harness it a little different now. I, I'm the same nigga. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. Ain't I, nothing changed. I picked up what you're putting down. Uh, uh, Ian, <laughs> Ian ran. Uh, what do you, what do you call this? Uh, <laughs> uh, this person, but uh, but you know, but, Ian, Ian ran. That's uh, the philosophy. Ian ran. Yeah. Objectivism. I'm an objectivist. Go ahead. Yeah, objectivist. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. I love it. I love it all. But any, any, anywho. You know, uh, what, 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 what was going on? Because uh, I called you and I had another light when I called you. Where, okay. where were we at? Now we were talking. Oh, you were talking about um, the uh, uh, should people uh, athletes, pardon me, stand for the praying, pardon me, playing of the national anthem. That's the topic. Yeah, well, you know what? They don't have the oomph for it. They don't have the passion. They don't have the discipline for it. They don't have the drive for it. They don't. They could care less. They don't have the same meaning. See, when I I, I enjoy growing. My mom is from like the forty year old. Uh, now she taught for forty years. Yeah, but all this came with a price. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. this came with the price of me learning everything I got from her. The, I became the, the griot. I still tell the, the stories of the family. A lot of people are not going to get the story. Right. A lot of people are not going to understand why it's important to stand right. up. But even if you don't want to, you don't hear the stories of your grandfather got uh drafted into world war ii he came and then he comes home he didn't get the same benefits of the other uh the uh, um when you go to school you get the uh the gi bill you mm -hmm. don't get this you had to go to the bathroom in the in the, in the outhouses all of the of the the horrible horrific things that took place especially in the state of florida yeah yeah okay so i could tell you some of the most horrific stories from my grandparents who taught me, who taught me because they, that was just my, my grandma was my homie. 
Okay, a lot of these young people who you who are doing the not gonna stand up, they're, they're, they can't say, "Oh, my grandma, my homie." No, I love my grandma. Okay, that was my girl. So if they, if you if you can't identify from the horrors and the horrific, what you got to you gonna do what you got to do because you have to. Not because yeah, they're white, but guess what? That white man, he your enemy now. You ain't gonna stand up for the for the national anthem. You ain't gonna stand up when he all that stuff you see on the internet. Mm. He disrespects you every day, all day. He he spit in your face every day, all day when you turn on your phone. Right. When you go to bed at night, when you clock in. G- g- girl, you you served in the, right. in the you served in the reserves and you're spitting the facts right now too. So I gotta respect what you're saying. And, and let me tell you this. Yeah. I served in reserve. She's talking about the enemy. Pay attention. Eleven. Come on. I served during I served during nine eleven. I got drafted and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I just wanted to go to school. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you where the brain power come in. I was honorably discharged because I was able to use my brain to think my way out of it. Good for you. Not because I was Good a coward. I'm willing yeah. to die or fear for more. But I was willing to. I was able to maneuver my way out for my brain. You you saw the flim flam going down the the weapons the weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and you said this ain't what I want. Absolutely, I, I, I'm out of here, right? Yeah, yeah. I just want. I just wanted to. I want to get a little. But you got a, a bonus, a sign on. Look that couple of thousand. Right, right. But do you know they they they, they tried to get me, but they didn't. I know. Well, listen, baby, I appreciate the call. I'm going to take some other uh, okay, calls. Okay, thank you so much. Thank sure, you. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right.